In prison, Sunday at 10. Today, a key Texas showdown as Big 12 rivals Texas Tech and Texas A&M battle for bowl position. Tech's leading man, quarterback Sonny Cumbie. And with a posse of big-time receivers, this high-flying offense has Cumbie atop the nation in passing yards. A&M's more balanced attack is anchored by quarterback Reggie McNeil, a double-barreled threat in the air and on the ground. They're tough to beat here at Kyle Field, home of the famed 12th man. Two Texas teams battling for bragging rights meet in a Lone Star State showdown next on ABC. When you come to College Station, Texas for college football, you're coming to a place that even opposing coaches and players say provides an atmosphere that is second to none. And once again today, a passionate, frenzied throng of more than 80,000 on hand to see if the host Aggies of Texas A&M can continue their amazing run of success here at Kyle Field, where they've won 83% of their game since 1990. The opponent today, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. And we're anticipating an old-fashioned Texas shootout driven by two bowl-eligible teams. They can light up any scoreboard. Just look at the numbers. They combine for nearly 70 points a game, and they combine also for close to 800 total yards of offense every time they're on the field. Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm Gary Gerald. Proud to be alongside longtime NFL head coach Dan Reeves. This is the 63rd renewal of a series that dates all the way back to 1927. Texas Tech has had the edge of late. Coach, they've won three straight. They've won seven of the last nine. They rely on an old-fashioned Texas gunslinger. His name, Sonny Cumbie. When you consider what he's done this year, it's been an amazing season. He completes 66% of his passes. He's thrown for 24 touchdowns. But the big number, he averages a nation best 405 yards passing every time he steps out onto the field. Coach, why has he been so successful? Boy, I tell you, he is a gunslinger, Gary. And I think his head coach thinks he's got a machine gun because he asked him to throw the ball 80% of the time. And he does a tremendous job of that. He's going to put a lot of pressure on this Texas A&M pass defense that's ranked 99th in the country. A big challenge, no question about that. Now, as far as the offensive side is concerned for A&M, they've got their own special weapon of sort. His name is Reggie. Now, now, it's not the Reggie that you may have come accustomed to being referred to as Mr. October, wearing the pinstripes of the New York Yankees, Reggie Jackson in the great World Series success for old number 44. The Reggie we're talking about is Reggie McNeil. Reggie McNeil brings a whole different dimension now than coming. What makes this young man so special? Well, he's an exciting player to watch. He reminds me a lot of Mike Vick because he can beat you with his arm or his feet. And he'll do a tremendous job of protecting the football. Only two interceptions in 242 attempts this year, so he's taking care of the football. The important thing today is I think he's going to have to use his feet a little bit more against a stingy Texas Tech pass defense. And he can run with a football. you talking about Michael Vick type like run that is an exciting element. If you like wide open, high scoring football, you've come to the right place today. This ought to be a lot of fun. And with the 12th man, you know the joint is going to be rocking. The 12th man. This is what AM football is all about. Nothing like a day in the sun to see if Melissa's love for one of these mascots heats up. So who wants to put lotion on my back? No. Help Melissa choose by voting at CapitalOneBowl.com for the National Mascot of the Year. Tune in to the Capital One Bowl to see who wins. What's in your wallet?
passage is intense. But if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. Your life, now with Instant Replay. Shared instantly. Video phones from Nokia. Thanks for sharing. Well, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech getting ready to come onto the field. A gray, overcast day. It is very cool and chilly. A wind blowing today. And now the host Aggies from AM coming through the ranks of the uh, cadets and the corps here on the Kyle Field, where they have just been so dominant in recent years. Let's check in down with the third member of our broadcast crew today, Vince Welch standing by with Coach Fran. After a 4-8 season a year ago, Texas A&M bounced back, got off to a great 6-1 start. But Coach Fran, two heartbreaking losses in the last two weeks. What's the mindset of your team coming into this game today? It's good. They. Uh, are excited to play and excited to be at home. Seniors last day. They've done a great job of playing one game at a time. What's the single biggest key to beating Texas Tech this afternoon? Turnovers and takeaways. There you go. Thanks, Coach. Thank Gary? Turnovers. They were a nemesis last week for a and There's Mike Leach. He's the head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, his fifth year as head coach. He is quite a character, and we've enjoyed talking with him this week as he gets his team prepared to see if they can extend their dominance over the Aggies. Reggie McNeil, the quarterback we were talking about moments ago, warming up on the sidelines. He wears, proudly wears, jersey number one. He's had some impressive numbers this year. 58% completion. Total offense. You don't see the rushing yards reflected here, but man, this kid can run with the football. As Coach Reeves mentioned a few moments ago, he reminds you of a Michael Vick type of a character. And Michael Vick is one of the guys who inspires Reggie McNeil. Too good, the kicker for Texas A&M. A&M actually will be receiving, although Texas Tech won the toss, they elected to defer. Here are your weather conditions today. Right now, a 10-mile-per-hour breeze. Last Saturday, in the near upset of Oklahoma in this same stadium, it was 80 degrees. So you've got a 25 to 30-degree temperature swing. It's a November day in Texas football. Oh, it blows off the tee. The cannon goes off, <laughs> and we've had an earthquake here. A misfire, it. just as he was about ready to plant and boot it. How about that? What a great way to start a game, right? <laughs> we built it up all this excitement, and you missed the kick. <laughs> you, could, you could just see his foot swinging through there. Yeah, I lucky, wonder what that feels like when you plant and yeah. you're ready to explode, and too good suddenly kicks nothing but air. Yeah, lucky, didn't, you, didn't, hurt lucky didn't hurt himself. You're right. <laughs> Keith Tugut, a sophomore. Now we've got it underway, and the cannon fires one more time. Jason Ooh. Carter, Ooh. man, he didn't get very far. He got pounded as he hit the 15-16 yard line. Let's check our FedEx starting lineups now. A&M will be handling for the first time. Joseph, Courtney Lewis, Boone Stutz, what a character he is. The long snapper and tight end. Joey Thomas also plays that spot. We're going to show you a lot of different receivers because a lot of different guys catch balls over the course of the day. Irvin Taylor had a big touchdown against Oklahoma last week. Here's the line up front. A lot of good experience on the left side, but you got a couple of freshmen there in the middle. First down, and this contest is underway. Oh, a nice hole turning his way straight ahead, getting up across the 25. Boy, that was a terrific start. Courtney Lewis, the running back. And we'll take a look now at your FedEx starting lineups defensively on the front for Texas Tech. Nitchman, Hudler, Scott, and Adele Duckett. Duckett is a captain. Here's your linebacking crew. All Texas residents, you'll find predominantly Texas players on these rosters and the secondary for Tech. 
Second down now. McNeil keeping the ball, showing us his running ability. And Tech stops him. And boy, that was kind of awkward the way he was crunched down at about the 32-yard line there. Gain of seven, however. Going to move the chains. Yeah, he bounced right back up. And that's what he's going to have to do. I mean, he's going to have to run the football for them to be successful today. Josh Rangel was the man who was there on a tackle today. Chad Johnson, who has started games out with an ankle injury, doubtful for this one, even though he is in uniform. And so a couple of last-minute changes in the starting lineup. You see the rushing numbers for Reggie McNeil, sixth among Division I-A quarterbacks. That's why you hear the talk about the similarities to Michael Vick. This time he wants to throw it. He does. Ball is knocked away at the 45-yard line. The intended receiver was Terrence Murphy, and Rangel once again was there to break it up. And Rangel starting for the injured Chad Johnson, and he did a great job there. Almost had an interception on that play. These are two teams, Coach, that you can sometimes barely take a breath because they, they're liable to strike any time they get a snap. I mean, they can go the length of the field in a heartbeat. Yeah, they really can. I tell you, Texas Tech's defense has really done a great job pass defense. They're right second in the Big Eight, so they got a good pass defense. Treating Reggie's going to have to use his feet a lot. Second and 10 from the 33. Fake handoff. McNeil keeping it across the 35 and out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Four-yard pickup that time. Tackle there by Vincent Meeks. Uh, knocked him out of bounds. It's a little different wrinkle there, Gary. I don't know that I've seen that on film. A little uh, fake draw and then kind of a bootleg, uh, you know, on the play. It was a pretty different kind of looking play. Big third down here. Over the last five games, AM has had 51% success in their conversion rate. Here's Texas A&M third down conversions on the season at 43%. Here's the empty set. Nobody, Nobody in the back there got a movement the there. And a couple of defenders charging in. We'll wait to see if they were pulled over or if they did it on their own. Talk about the great atmosphere here. We'll be getting the call here momentarily from Randy Crystal. Offside. Defense. Number 51. It's a five-yard penalty and remains third down. Deke Bake, who is a junior college transfer, makes his home in Sacramento, California, guilty of the violation there, number 51, and that's going to make it third and one now for a &M. We're talking about the atmosphere here. Even the opposing players and coaches, uh, Sonny Cumby and company for Texas Tech, we get to see them, of course, on the offensive side of the football. It's, they just love coming in here and playing in front of this crowd. It is an amazing atmosphere, there's no question. From the 41, third and short yardage. McNeil on the option. He's got his first down and more. Johnny Mack, or Courtney Lewis, I'm sorry. The tailback, and that looks like about a 12-yard pickup that time. Boy, yeah, it's an option play, and you see he comes down the line, does a great job of pitching it right at the last minute. I was going to say, Coach, he waited right until the last moment. Yeah, and a perfect pitch. I don't know that we've seen him run the option much this year. Another little wrinkle and great uh, pitch there by, by Reggie. Courtney Lewis this year has rushed for well over 600 yards. You can see his average per carry. Four and a third yards, seven touchdowns. Oh, Bake jumped up there again. Penalty marker, pump fake, and look at McNeil. He's got a lot of room to work. Reggie to the 35-yard line. Again, coming out of that empty set, uh, spreads the defense out, and that's where Reggie said, you know, he was really more comfortable than anywhere else. He was in that shotgun and uh, empty that he could read the defense and uh, certainly got a good read that time and made a good run. Antonio Huffman. Defense, number 90. The penalties behind the game sufficient for a first down. Well, it was not uh, Bake. Let's, uh, he jumped and got back, apparently. They called number 90, Patrice Majando Mwamba, who is from Brussels, Belgium, and plays American college football very well. At that time, he made the mistake at the 35-yard line after the 12-yard pickup, and McNeil finding lots of room to work behind that front line. Courtney Lewis, nowhere to go this time. May have lost a yard on that one. 
Really Rock a good Stratton defensive play, yeah. Really good play. He comes off the block right here and then makes the tackle. That's a good play. So the ball at the 36, second down and 11. A lot of different defensive matchups uh, making uh, Texas Tech substitute here. And again, the empty package this time under the center. Got lots of options. Three men split to the left side, two to the right side. The quick throw goes left. Thomas down the sideline. Terrence Thomas. Yeah, we got uh, penalty marker down there on the far sideline. Got to... Uh, the 29-yard line for a pickup of seven. Waiting for the call here from Randy Crystal. Holding. Offense, number nine. It'll be a 10-yard penalty and remains second down. Daquan Mobley on the call for the holding. And let's check in with our studio guys in New York, John Saunders. Here with the Taco Bell update, Gary. Texas trailed against Kansas late, but Vince Young leads them back 21 yards to Tony Jeffrey. And Kansas looked like they were poised for the upset, but Texas still stays in that BCS chase with a victory 27-23. Wow, if they had not gotten that score with 11 <laughs> seconds to go, you can imagine how crushing that would have been. They were announcing that score earlier here, and every time they did with Kansas up, this crowd just erupted. Here's McNeil. He's got room once again. Banged at the 38 and down to about the 36-yard line. Josh Rangel, who's been busy early on over there with Stratton, making the tackle. Eight-yard pickup. It's great, great play, you know, a great tackle in open field right here. You got a guy that's this fast and this quick. You get him in the open field. He does a tremendous job of making the tackle right there, Josh Rangel. Third and 13. Just underway. It's the first possession for the Aggies of Texas A&M. Their final home game of the year. McNeil steps up, looks long, and no chance to pull down. Oh, another flag. The intended receiver was Latidric Riley. Khalid Nazirudin was down there and trying to defend, and we saw the anticipation here of pass interference. Boy, a lot of penalties on this first drive, Coach. Yeah, a lot of penalties, and this is going to be a... Pass interference. Defense. Number 26, it's a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, we look at this play here now. You can see the, the throw. 26 has got great position on him right here, but he really just kind of pushes him out of the way, which is definitely pass interference and a good call there by the official. Nazir Rudin out of uh, Spring, Texas. He's a junior. Yeah, and he's really been a big uh, difference in their pass defense. That's uh, just a tough penalty right there. He's their second leading tackler thus far this year. Inside handoff, Lewis trying to dance to his right, but not much working that time as he ran into a host of Tech defenders and on the bottom of the pile. Chris, Chris Hudler. Hudler. Good play there coming off the block. And, you know, doing a good job of getting rid of the blocks and uh, stopping the running game up in the, the line of scrimmage. So they're doing a good job up front. The penalties are the difference in the drive so far. Second down and nine. Tenth play coming up here in this opening assault by the Aggies. Out of the shotgun. And again, looking to run and doing it well to the 16-yard line is McNeil. Vincent Meeks slicing across along with Josh Rangel to make the tackle after a five-yard pickup and third down coming up now. Well, Coach, they've moved into the red zone, and this is a team that's had some pretty doggone good success. As you look at the numbers here, 34 drives inside the 20. They've scored out of a possible 238 points, 185. 
28 consecutive red zone opportunities yeah. have been converted into points. That's yeah. pretty doggone good. You know, big third down here, though. Third and three it's going to be a tough uh, pickup right here. It's going to be important if they're going to keep this thing going and try to get seven. Here's that option look, and the toss comes to Lewis. He turns the corner, and he banged hard at about the 14-yard line. Looks like they may be short, but markers are across the field. Antonio Huffman coming over there and making the contact. Looked like about a three-yard pickup. Same exact play they ran earlier on third down in short yardage and uh, did a good job pitching out and a good block there by, by uh, Keith Joseph there on the play. Where are they going to send? Play by Texas Tech to stop and uh, bring up fourth down. Going to send a field goal team out here. Todd <laughs> Pegram, boy, he, what a year he's had. He hasn't missed in 10 opportunities as a field goal kicker. His longest this year, 44 yards. Be sure it's a field goal. <laughs> now they faked one and got a touchdown out of it last week. Trader, who is the holder, can also pass it. He does spot it. The kick is on the way. And just inside the upright, a 30-yard attempt results in the first three points of the afternoon. So at College Station, the host Texas A&M Aggies draw first blood as they march virtually the length of the field for the first three points. My dad calls it being spontaneous. We jump in our new Nissan Pathfinder and go. We see trees, mountains, and lakes. We sing corny songs. I really like motorcycles. I love our new Pathfinder. Ever since we got it, we do a lot of this spontaneous stuff. The new seven passenger, 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Lease the new seven passenger Nissan Pathfinder at the special introductory rate. I pulled into Nazareth, was feeling about half past dead. I just need some place. More, more places. That's the goal of Singular's All Over Network, with the largest digital voice and data coverage in America. Thanks to Singular and AT&T Wireless joining forces. Welcome to the new Singular. We're raising the bar. Can I take your order? Yeah, I'll have the stuffed chicken marsala. Oh, me too. You know what, then I'm gonna get the stuffed chicken limone. Ooh, that sounds good too. Why don't I get the limone, you get the marsala, and we'll switch. <laughs> Try two great dishes from Olive Garden. Stuffed chicken marsala, bursting with Italian cheeses and sun-dried tomatoes in a creamy marsala sauce. And new stuffed chicken limone in a light lemon butter sauce, both with endless salad and breadsticks. Switch? Share. Olive Garden, <laughs> when you're here, you're family. Why do we work? Why do we get up every day and leave the people we love? At the Principal Financial Group, we know you work for more than just a paycheck. For 120 years, the Principal has helped people keep more of the money they make and do more with the money they save. You work hard. We make work work hard for you. The Principal Financial Group. We understand what you're working for. Get into the game now with Enhanced TV at ESPN.com and interact for your chance to win a premium SUV. Texas A&M, young leaders, very happy at the way this one has progressed, taking the first minutes and going the length of the field and checking out now our Nissan scoring drive. You see 12 plays, 70 yards. Of the 70, Reggie McNeil rushed for 37 on that before Pegram hit the 30-yard field goal. Well, he did a really good job. That's what he's got to do. He's got to be a factor running the football because they're really tough in pass defense. So, really good drive. Came away with three points. They'd like to have seven, but three is better than nothing. Well, twin return men awaiting Johnny Mack and Danny Amendola. Hit coming to the near side. Mack at the 10 yard line, ready to go to work. Across the 20. And uh, got a flag down here as he got to about the 27, 28 yard line before he was upended. Sonny Cumby is the quarterback we talked about as we came on the air. And there are the numbers more than three and a half thousand yards this season in nine games. 14 interceptions does not bode well, but look at that over 300 yards passing in all nine games. 
Six four senior. Get ready to go. Holding during the return, number 42. First and 10, Texas Tech. Well, the penalty moves them back now where the ball is spotted at the 16-yard line. Get a look at Mike Leach, the 43-year-old head coach on the sideline. And his man can be ready to handle that football for the first time under game conditions this afternoon. He stands in the shotgun at the 10. And immediately he throws to the far sideline and making the catch is Cody Fuller. Well, let's check the FedEx starting lineup now for Texas Tech. Their backs and receivers saw Bishop Anderson along with Hicks. Hicks is closing in on 1,000 receiving yards this year. Cody Fuller made that catch a moment ago. Here are the big boys up front now. And you see all five of them from Texas. They have three seniors in that group. They got a good offensive line. That's going to be important for them today. Changing the play here. And that just escalates the noise level a bit. Here comes some pressure up the middle. They pop it outside. Anderson working his way across the 27 to the 28-yard line, about a six-yard pickup for Torian Henderson. Here's the defensive look now for Texas A&M. Mike Montgomery. Boy, he is a horse. He's a big fellow. You probably hear his name called a lot today with Jolly, Brian, and Jack. That's been consistent all season long. Foley hockey. Archie McDaniel gets a start today, as does Blake Kendrick, because of injuries to other players. We'll get to the cornerbacks here in just a moment. It's a young man you got to keep your eye on because he's a heck of a safety. He does a great job. Leading tackler on a and defense. He's all over the field. Jackson Appel is his name, number 19. He had 12 tackles, three for loss against Oklahoma last week. Cumbie with time to throw. Got a man at the 45 on the move. It's Fuller to the 40 to the 38-yard line. Boy, what a strike, 34 yards. And coach, you were talking about how the pass defense is gonna be tested today. And here you have it right off the bat. Well, you really do. Look at the splits now and look at the pass protection. He's got all day to throw it. Wide open, great route there. Just a good throwing catch. It's like playing out in your backyard right there. Jafus Brown was able to finally catch up with Cody Fuller and make the tackle, but already now in A&M territory. And this crowd now in a frenzy wanting the defense to respond. But against Sonny Gumby, that's a very tall order. Inside handoff. Anderson banged down at about the 36-yard line, picks up a tough three. Just a draw play there and a good uh, reaction by the AM defense. And good tackle there, stopped him for about, uh, what, three yards. Mike Montgomery coming up to make the stop. You see him waving the 12th man towels here. Yeah, they're not huddling. You know, staying in that shotgun and look at the splits of that offensive line. Usually means it's a pass when they're split that wide. Really spreads out the defense. Here's the toss, oh, and it's up. intercepted. The 15th time this year the Cumbie has been intercepted, and Jafus Brown who made the tackle a moment ago. Now comes up with the pick, and there's your first turnover of the afternoon. Okay, and that's what the A&M's got to do because they give up a lot of yardage. They've got to come up with some turnovers. Well, we'll come back and see what they can sustain on their second opportunity right after this quick timeout. How about Italian? Nah, carbs. How about that little sushi place? I was thinking something maybe cooked? Okay, how about Chinese? With all-wheel drive and 245 horsepower. How long have those been hanging there? You can explore the four corners of the world. I got it, I got it. For dinner. Happy anniversary. The Nissan Murano. How did you get this reservation? Ooh, fajitas. Ooh, fajitas. Ooh, fajitas. There's a whole new way to look at fajitas. Ooh, fajitas. Taco Bell's Fajita Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Authentic carne asada steak and grilled fajita vegetables. All wrapped in a flour tortilla and grilled to go. Ooh, fajitas. <laughs> For sizzling fajita taste, think outside the bun. 
Shrek and Donkey on another whirlwind adventure. Shrek 2 is the number one DVD in America. Look at him, his wee little boots. USA Today gives it four stars. Donkey, you're a stallion, baby! Bring Shrek 2 home today. Learn more about spiders at spdr.com. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Everything we touch, we shift, and everything we shift, we try to make better. Viagra, ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. The Hartford Mutual Funds, official corporate partner of the NCAA. And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. Beautiful facilities here at College Station. You see the Texas flag proudly flying alongside the red, white, and blue, and the ball now in the hands of the Aggies of A&M at the 30-yard line. Inside handoff here. Lewis pops it out on the outside, trying to get a little running room. Gets up to about the 38-yard line, the 39-yard line. All of this after the first turnover of the game on the Cumbie Pass interception. Watch number 97, the defensive uh, right tackle, drops out on his own blitz, and he causes the quarterback uh, Cumbie to throw it high, and it's intercepted there, you know, on the play by Buell. Javis oh, Brown with his, by yeah, Brown, his yeah. third interception of the season, the 15th that's been thrown by Cumby this year after he had moved his club very quickly into AM territory. Now, second and short yardage. McNeil fakes the handoff, rolls toward the near side. Now with those quick feet, circles back to the left. Look at this young man run. He gets a block out there, gets the first down, out of bounds. Now we've got a late flag coming in. And maybe that little block that enabled him to turn the corner will end up costing the Aggies. Just a two-yard pickup after all that running. Yeah, I'll tell you, pretty good lick by the coach on the sideline when he <laughs> ran out of bounds. Let's take a look at this sequence, coach. Yeah, he come out on a bootleg, and uh, he doesn't find anybody open. He does a great job of scrambling around. But he gets hit as he goes out of bounds right here. Watch the coach hit him. Right. Pretty good hit. Pretty good little lick right there. Hmm. Oh, it's by number 51 hits him. That's where the, the shot came from. Penalty was called on the hold against Courtney Lewis, number 25, and so that moves the ball back to the 29-yard line, and now it becomes second and 11. Just joining us, A&M getting a 30-yard field goal from Pegram for the only points that have been scored thus far. This is their second possession of the game. McNeil throwing to the left side and completing the pass. Out there and making the catch with Jason Carter. That's a nine-yard pickup, so now it's going to be third and about two as we welcome you in to Kyle Field at College Station, Texas. 80,000 usual rabid fans on here. I'm Gary Gerald along with the coach, Dan Reeves. Vince Welch patrols the sidelines for us today. And great to have you along here for a game that has interesting bowl implications for both of these clubs. They're both bowl eligible with six and three identical records. And, of course, a victory today might uh, just pivot one of these teams into a little more significant bowl opportunity come the postseason. Yeah, this is a goal-round attack right here. Good, good. Straight ahead, the big fullback, Joseph, just barreling his way for the five-yard pickup. That'll move the sticks and a first down. Now, Texas getting their victory today in comeback fashion. Now with a 6-1 uh, and one conference record, 9-1 and one overall. You see Oklahoma still leads the Southern Division of the Big 12, but Tech and A&M right there behind. Boy, in Texas, A&M came so close to upsetting Oklahoma in this stadium a week ago today. That was an amazing ball game. Great ball game. We've got a good one going here. Lewis inside. Not much room to work there. He tried to wiggle free, but really wasn't able to do so. Picked up maybe one tough yard. Nishman and Bake there to make the tackle. I tell you, they're doing a good job up front of the Texas Tech defense. They're jamming things up. Uh, a and had to come up with some kind of unusual plays to, to move the football. So Texas Tech's been pretty tough up front. Ball with a 43-yard line, second down. 
second and ten. Little play action fake. Plenty of time to throw it. Got a man. Murphy makes the catch. She's inside the 20 yard line. Terrence Murphy pulls it in. And was that ball beautifully delivered for a 39 yard pickup? Yes, sir. Great uh, route right here by uh, Murphy. He does a good job. Takes a little bit outside, comes to the post in a perfectly pass. Great pass. Couldn't have laid that one in there any better if he'd have just run down there and handed it to him. Yeah, great throw and catch right there. Terrence Murphy, you see the all-time leader in catches at AM. Back down in the red zone, too, Gary. Very That's dangerous. right. 28 out of 28 now, right? They're scoring. Well, they did it that last time. They got the field goal on the last possession. Inside handoff to Lewis. Lewis circles back and now run out of bounds as he tried to get down around the 15-yard line. They have picked up a yard or so. Yeah, another time he runs a draw and it just doesn't open up exactly where it's supposed to. And he tries to make something out of it. But again, Texas Tech did a good job up front and he did a good job to get two yards out of it. It looked like he was going to lose some yardage there for a second. Look at the total yardage already in the early stages of the first quarter of this one. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, Texas Tech has started slow the last, uh, you know, a lot this year, and so you better not get too far behind in this stadium. Well, maybe he sees something that he didn't like, and he wants to take a timeout. So he'll come to the near sideline and talk it over with Coach Fran and company. And we will take a break from College Station, where the Aggies have the field goal for the 3-0 lead, and they are threatening again. Remember that guy who used to be called Wild Thing? The guy who wanted to spend the entire honeymoon indoors? Remember the one who couldn't resist a little mischief? Yeah, that guy. He's back. Viagra. Not all medications are for everyone. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. Funds from the Hartford for people who are always thinking ahead. Ask your advisor. Just one day away from the American Music Award. Music's biggest artists are going head to head with live performances by Lenny Kravitz, Usher and Alicia Keys, Jessica Simpson, Toby Keith, and Gwen Stefani. The American Music Awards live tomorrow at 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Along with Dan Reeves, I'm Gary Gerald, reminding you you can interact on Enhanced TV now at ESPN.com. Well, 14 runs, three passes for AM. Reggie McNeil's been pretty stout, coach. Yeah, he really is. He's running the ball. Uh, made some big plays, you see here. Took off running down a pass play right there, but the first one was a planned run. This is a perfectly thrown pass right here to T Murph. He does a great job of landing out there on the post pattern. Sucked the safety up with a good run fake, so. And a second down situation now. Here's the inside handoff to Joseph, and he doesn't get much. Maybe a yard or two. He's a bruiser. Better than 250 pounds. Keith Joseph, a senior out of Houston. Ted Brock Stratton has made a lot of plays already in this ball game. I don't know how many tackles, but that was a good play he made right there. Stopping a really big running back, as you said, Joseph is really big. Well, on the first possession, the Aggies were able to get down deep into the red zone, and Tech held them to a three-point opportunity, and Pegram converted from 30 yards. 
and has now rushed for 77 yards thus far in this ball game. Here's the empty set. No backs in the backfield, just the quarterback. Quarterback he draw. Saved. Oh, he runs into his yeah. old man there up front, and he didn't find anything at all. Texas Tech did a great job, and again, Brock Stratton right in the middle of all that, number 45. Yeah, he did a good job, but I think he missed his hole right there. See right here, you can see the blocking. He should have gone behind the guard and was pulling. He just got patient enough there, got a little too impatient and didn't let the play develop. So it's field goal time for a second time. This will be a 31-yard attempt, and Pegram is the man once again. Trying to double the point total. You don't see a real big rush coming in, do you? Uh, they're so afraid of some kind of fake. You don't get much of a rush out here. See, <laughs> just standing around. Drives this one right down the middle. So a second field goal from Pegram, a 6-0 lead as far as AM is now concerned. Let's check in again with John Saunders in New York. And the Verizon Wireless Update. Michigan State gets to this punt of Wisconsin, blocks it, it rolls towards the end zone, gets shoveled in and recovered for a touchdown. Michigan State with a lead of 14-7 over the undefeated Badgers. Back to you. Yeah, the Badgers looking for that 10th straight victory this year, but they're going to have to do it and come from behind fashion if they can pull it off against the Spartans. Here in Texas in this uh, regional matchup, we've got a &M with a pair of field goals, and we'll go to the sidelines to check with Vince Welch. Of the 238 players on the combined rosters for Texas Tech and Texas A&M, 200 of them are from the state of Texas. Why is Texas such a recruiting hotbed for college football coaches? More than 1,200 high schools in the state of Texas. And the state is so big that when you're in El Paso, you're closer to Los Angeles than you are to Houston. More than 300 kids will sign Division I college football scholarships this year from the state of Texas alone. You see some good Texas football today. Just think about that. Now, that when, when you realize that El Paso is closer to San Diego than it is to Houston, that kind of makes you think, now, wait a minute, are you sure about that? But, yeah, that's the case. Amazing. In there. All right, let's see what can happen now. The Tech ball coming to the sideline. It goes out of bounds. Tony Mack put on the brakes there and said, I think that one's going out of bounds, and indeed it did. Boy, that's a big, uh, that's tough. When you kick off, Get that kind of field position on the kickoff, that really hurts. Kind of hooked it into that win yeah. and it went out of bounds. Very good job, though, by uh, Mac and not feeling that ball and letting it go out of bounds because you get it now on the 35 yard line. Look at the yards, the plays, the time of possession in this first quarter. Gumby had his club on the move when the interception. Gave the Aggies a second chance or a second uh, possession. Gumby starts at the 35. Up under the quarterback. Quick outlet pass comes to Hicks. Hicks across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Six-yard pickup. Jared Hicks closing in on 1,000 yards receiving this season. He needed just 17 coming into this game. And he gets six of the 17 right there. He's a big time receiver. We got the size you look for at 6'4, 210, great hands, and just a sophomore. Somebody may be changing that call up here at the lineup, making sure that everybody has got the count. Henderson working his way to the outside. He's got quick feet, he's across midfield. Ridden out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. An 11-yard pickup. That should be a first down. Well, Monday night, Donovan McNabb, Darrell Owens, and the 7-1 and one Philadelphia Eagles will be heading to Texas. They'll be in Dallas to take on Bill Parcells and the Cowboys. And we're talking Monday night football right here on ABC, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Cowboys are tough at home on Monday night, so the record doesn't mean anything. The Eagles better be ready going into Texas Stadium. Yeah, Coach Dan Reeves knows all about Texas and the Cowboys, and it's been fun, Coach, watching the great reception you've received here at College Station everywhere you've gone this weekend. People coming up to offer hospitality and greetings, and thanks for many great memories. Well, it's been great for me, I tell you. That's another tackle there by 
tackle made by Brown. He does a good job Brown. coming up and making the tackle. Texas Tech's kind of doing it on the ground, Gary. <laughs> you know, running the football, you expect them to come out just throwing it, and, you know, they're proving that they can run the football, too, so they've done a good job of uh, running it and making some yardage there by Henderson. He's a great runner, got great quickness. Six-yard pickup that time, makes it second and four. Second time now that Cumbie has been in Aggie territory. <clears throat> working that time as they get possibly to the 40 yard line and Henderson who is the workhorse when they go to the ground and they're still going to need a couple for a first down good play there by the A&M defense in the same play they just got hurt with before and good tackle by Ross coming up and making the play there big Henderson, third down Henderson has now carried five times for 28 total yards third and two Or they spread that defense out with those wide splits in the offensive line. And again, you see Cumbie making that last minute. They're a little tighter Ooh, than they normally are, though. Yeah, that usually means the ahead, And then one of those big splits opens up just enough room there for Henderson to get about a six, seven yard pickup and a first down. And that quiets the crowd for the moment. Yeah, Brown makes a tackle again. And, you know, that uh, fake that they use right there, that's normally the fake that they use to glove right there. But. Still was effective and opened the hole up for Henderson right there. Coach mentioned Nehemiah Glover, who is out today by injury. He's one of the offensive captains who has 21 career touchdowns, but he is not in uniform or available for this one. Gumbe looking to throw. Man-to-man -man coverage down the sideline and incomplete. He was trying to go to Jarrett Hicks. Yeah, real good coverage there by Newton. You see Hicks now coming on a go route, as we call it. And he doesn't really run hard right here. He doesn't look like he's going to try to run by him, but uh, Cumbie threw it up for him because uh, he gets a mismatch in size right there, but a good coverage there by Newton. Cumbie, who averages 405 passing yards a game, currently 3 of 5 for 46 yards, but he had that big interception that stopped their first drive. Plenty of time to throw. Dumps it off to Hicks, crossing underneath, and he is tackled immediately. Oh, that's a great defensive job by Brock Newton. Two, two really good coverages in a row, Gary, by Newton. Brock Newton did a great job on both those plays. That's for a two-yard loss. Yeah, you see him coming across. Great job there, too, by the linebackers. Uh, Boliaki does a good job of forcing him up inside. Well... The clock is wound down, and we have come to the end of our first quarter. Texas Tech on the move. They're at the 35-yard line in AM territory, but AM has a pair of field goals for a 6-0 lead. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Every great story starts with a great adventure. Introducing the all-new Nissan Pathfinder with a 270 horsepower engine, three row seating for seven, GPS navigation and DVD entertainment, and more off-road capability than ever before. Because you can't talk about the mountaintop unless you actually see the mountaintop. Tell better stories in the new seven passenger, 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Lease the new seven passenger Nissan Pathfinder with a special introductory rate. This is our house. Everything you have trained for your entire life has prepared you for this moment. It's us versus them. All I want to talk about is how big they are. And then this is the year they knocked us off. Well, when they come in here, they got to play our game in our house, and nobody beats us in our house. We must protect this house. Can you hear me now? Good. Now. Good, good. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Good. We ask good. the same question good. over and over. Can you hear me now? So that you don't have to. Good. Verizon Wireless has fewer dropped calls than any other wireless network. Good. Can you hear me now? It's what makes us the most reliable wireless network in the nation. Now. 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 Can you hear me now? now? Can you hear me now? Good. Verizon Wireless. Can you hear me now? We never stop working for you. Good. 
He saved a boy from a dangerous father. Can you stay with me? Now. He killed his mother. You can't tell me the courts are going to seriously consider giving Michael back to him. He'll stop at nothing to save him again. New Blue, Tuesday, 10, 9 central only on ABC. Viewer discretion advised. Introducing the 300 horsepower Acura RL. With voice activated technology and super handling all wheel drive, power can be shifted front to rear, side to side, and while cornering, the outside rear wheel is accelerated for dramatically improved handling in all weather conditions. The all new Acura RL. The South Park Mexican speaks out from prison Sunday at 10. As we get ready to start second quarter play, let's check out our Pacific Life game summary. You'll see the score, 6-0, a pair of field goals from Pegram. McNeil with 86 total yards. Cumbe with that one interception. Here we go, and we've got an incomplete pass. And looking for flags, don't see any. Very good coverage again. But Cody Fuller ran a good in route. And I tell you, A&M has stepped up and, and playing pass defense a lot better. Jones broke that up. Byron Jones did a tremendous job of covering Fuller to the post. Well, you mentioned, Coach, when we came on the air today about how the A&M pass coverage ranked only 99th out of 117 teams in Division 1A. And they have now forced a punting situation. We get our first look at Alex Reyes. He's the sophomore from Allen, Texas, who stands right at midfield. Hey, a &M only had nine guys on the field. Is that right? Yeah. See, you're a coach. You notice those things right away. Yeah, I love that. Three, three, six, nine, two, four, six, eight, nine guys on the field. Well, a little bit uh, shorthanded, to say the least. Maybe we'll get a high look here. I think we'll be able to well, count, just count them. Them. You can see three guys down right there. You see two, four, six guys behind the three down guys. That's nine. I learned that in South Carolina. <laughs> And I'm glad you did. Yeah, the nine players in the on the field. For the third time now, the third possession, Reggie McNeil comes out here. He was very productive in moving his club, didn't have to get any touchdowns in the first quarter, but a couple of field goals for the six play advantage. Takes the inside handoff, being chased. He's in trouble. And yeah. down he goes. Seth Nishman makes the tackle as we go to the sidelines and bits. Gary, Texas Tech coach Mike Leach has said that he sometimes uh, refers to a, uh, a sword much more realistic than this one, but encouraging his players to treat their bodies like a pirate treats a sword. When a pirate comes onto a ship, he swings it very aggressively, and he says that you should treat your body like a sword. Go out there and throw it around on the field aggressively, because if not, it's not going to work out for you, just as if the uh, pirate did not treat the sword in the same manner. He told us he found that sword on the internet, and he said some of the players don't even want to touch it. Some of them are fascinated by it. They want to see it, touch it, handle it. But every once in a while, he references that sword, and that just kind of jacks everybody up as far as his crew is concerned. Great tackle there by Duckett. Uh, he's a heck of a football player. I think he led their football team last year in 14 sacks, and he's picked up again this year with the same type of play. Really good football player. Every third down, and still... 14 yards to go. You see Mike Leach in his fifth season. He has a law degree. He's going to practice law, and then he thought he'd try his hand at coaching and uh, said, well, I'll try this for a year or so before I put the suit on and go to the bar practicing law. There he is now, still coaching football and coaching it very well. An incompleted pass for the uh, first time today. Texas Tech's defense really muscled up. Jason Carter was <coughs> the intended receiver. So third and long yard, or fourth and long yardage, and Jacob Young comes in. Now last week against Oklahoma, Jacob figured in one of those great fakes, and Coach Franchoni is a man who loves those uh, trick or gimmick plays, if you want to call them that. He doesn't necessarily agree that they're trick or gimmick plays, but he is the master. And Coach Leach will tell you that you have got to be ready for a fake at any time, at any place on the field. Young is kicking this one all the way, and it's a beauty. Oh, a beauty. Oh, look at that. All the way back to the 33-yard line. 
Not a lot working there for Danny Amendola. 49-yard punt, a two-yard return, but once again, we've got a penalty marker on the field. Well, what a contrast from a week ago when in Texas it was unseasonably warm. Illegal block in the back during the return, number 33. It'll be a 10-yard penalty, first and 10. Media, time out. Well, we'll take a break here. 6-0 is our score, and we'll see if Tech can generate some offense right after this break. Allstate presents Good Hands Flashback. On October 23rd against Rutgers, Pittsburgh's Joe Del Sardo caught two touchdowns. In the first quarter, Panther quarterback Tyler Falco found Del Sardo in the back of the end zone for this 18-yard completion. This one-handed gem gave Pittsburgh a 7-0 lead on the way to a 41-17 romp over the Scarlet Knights. holding their fingers aloft in celebration of their team's greatness. But after the game, some of those same fans used their fingers for other purposes. When you leave the game, try to exercise some patience. You might even qualify for an Allstate Safe Driver discount because good sportsmanship should extend to the road. That's Allstate Stan. Are you in good hands? Hey parents, are you tired of your kids going over their wireless minutes? Yeah. And kids, are you tired of your parents hassling you for going over? Yeah. Well, now you can relax because only Sprint got rid of ugly overages. Check it out. Now families can talk more. Share 800 anytime minutes on two lines for just $70 a month. 100 extra minutes for just $5 means no ugly overages. And each additional line is just $10 a month. You can save money. Thanks. And you can keep talking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Chevy offers the most crew cabs of anyone. Colorado, Avalanche, Silverado, and Silverado Heavy Duty. The most crew cabs. That's why Chevy's the right truck. The official truck of an American revolution. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Tonight, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. home game of the year for the host Aggies of Texas A&M. They lead it on a pair of Pegram field goals, but right now, Texas Tech has the ball, and they start this drive at their own 31-yard line. Come be four of seven with one interception thus far. Has thrown for 44 yards. And he's ready to crank it up one more time. Dumps it out here. Nice tackle at the 39-yard line. Joey Hawkins, the tight end, making the tackle. He's a big guy at 6'9", 246 pounds. Okay, Coach. look at that last series. It's interesting here how Texas Tech is playing Reggie McNeil by spine. Three guys rushing. Now watch the two linebackers inside the hash right there. Waiting, and they're going to force him to throw the ball when they play man coverage. You can see everybody playing man in the secondary. Making Reggie throw the ball. They aren't going to get beat by him running it. Second down, short yardage for Cumbie. Henderson, with those quick feet, dances his way up to a, close to the 45-yard line, six-yard pickup, and a first down. Boy, he's really got some quick feet. That's such a great asset for a running back. If you ask most coaches, what's the greatest asset for a running back to have? You say quickness. And boy, he's got great feet. He's got great quickness. Coach, I enjoyed watching some video of previous games with you yesterday, and you're picking up on the little nuances of the games. It was an educational session. From my standpoint, but boy, he is fun to watch. No doubt. Here's Cumber. Again with time, dumps it out here. This time Henderson on the receiving end at midfield, still on his feet, and out of bounds now at about the 47-yard line. Well, it's time now for this week's Aflac trivia question. Come on, Duck, where are you? Let me hear you. 
Name the only three Big 12 schools that have been bowl eligible every year since the conference was formed in 1996. You log on to ETV and answer this question. Affleck. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Affleck. <laughs> we all, we're great fans of the Affleck book. Second down. Changing again at the line of scrimmage. This has been almost every play. Yeah. Sees a blitz coming here off the left side. Now we got whistles here as the play started to unfold and penalty markers down. Johnny Mack may have been in motion a little bit too soon there for Texas Tech. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 60, offense. It's a five yard penalty. Remain second down. That's the 12th man coming into play. Yeah, that making all that noise. Factor, yeah. Daniel Loper. Game, five yards. Made a move there. Well, we've got a great day for college football. It's kind of raw in November. Temperature in the 50s. Along with Dan Reeves and Vince Welch, I'm Gary Gerald. We're at College Station, Texas. The 63rd renewal of this series. And boy, there's no place like College Station to watch football. Oh, ball dropped. Trey Haverty had that one in his hands on his hip. May have been just a little bit behind him, but he did not hang on to it. Boy, I tell you, if he had caught that, he'd have been a lot was, of yardage in front of him. There was room to work. Yeah, it yeah, sure was. A little, little bit of hard throw right there. Did you see him come across? Puts a little heat on it, a little bit behind him. But, boy, he had some running room. Boy, Cumbie had to unload that one because he had... Maroon coming right up in his face. You see his number, 6 of 10, thus far. And ready to throw one more time. Uh -oh. oh, this one's up for grabs. It is intercepted the second time. Texas A&M, Archie McDaniel, who got the start today, will give his teammates the ball once again. And Archie enjoying the moment as he comes to the near sideline. The pressure right there got it. Forced that ball to be uh, thrown up in the air, and Archie made a great play. The junior from Bay City, Texas, first interception of the year, Coach. And here he gets. See the pressure right there. Great job of pushing the pocket. You know, right there by Johnny Jolly. He caused the interception. Give that credit to Johnny Jolly. Boy, I mean, he just muscled his way See? through two of those guys. <laughs> That's what you look for, somebody that can push the pocket. And he did a great job right there, giving them great field position. Well, both teams huddled up on their respective sidelines. It's still a 6-0 ball game. We thought it was going to be a wide open shootout. Not yet. And I don't even have that insurance. No. What insurance, Santa? <laughs> the one that pays you cash if you're hurt and can't work. Huh? Ah! <laughs> 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 Aflac. Ask about it at work. Can you just send down the toys? <laughs> five-star relaxed fit premium quality denim wrangler real comfortable jeans Technology to go. Chevy Trailblazer, an American revolution. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months, an American revolution. Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles. Are you jealous? Pacific Life offering insurance, annuities, investments. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Here's Reveille on the sideline. Reveille number seven. What a pretty dog. 
Oh, it is. Reveille enjoying the fact that they got six on the board. I think barking up six numbers there. Here's a reverse. Room to walk. Oh, he wants to throw it. Got a man down there. Murphy can't get to it. Terrence Murphy on the run. Jason Carter with the long throw led him just a yard or so too much. Boy, it was a well-executed play, and it was there. But, boy, it's a long ways to have to throw a halfback pass, or even though he's a former quarterback. Coach, I thought he was going to run the ball because he had all kinds of room over there. Well, he did, but then I saw him holding oh, the yeah. ball with two hands. I knew he was going to throw it, but, boy, Look it's, at that. Oh, oh. it's right out of reach. <laughs> There's the reaction Roger. from the senior out of Caldwell, Texas, Jason Carter. That's what you don't want to do when you're throwing that thing is you don't want to overthrow him, boy. You want to give him a chance. A little out of reach. Well, Texas Tech taking their second time out here with just over 11 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. You know, at uh, A&M, too, you know, as a coach, you get out in the red zone, you want to come away with points, but... When you have to settle for field goals all the time, it seems like it always comes back to haunt you. You want to come away with some seven, uh, you know, kind of dominated the football game, yet you're only up six nothing. Coach Fran, hey boy, I mean, you talk about a guy who uh, turnovers are the enemy. Here's what he had to say yesterday in a conversation with Vince about that very topic. Just basically take care of the football. Our, our um, WL column is is very directly tied to our turnover takeaway column. When we've won the turnover battle, we've, we've won the football game, and when we haven't been able to win it, we've lost the football game. And that still is, seems to be, as always, the number one statistic that correlates to success. Well, under Dennis Franchoni, 8-0 record with positive turnover margin. You see they hear 2-11 and 11 when it's gone in the other direction today. A pair of interceptions, their 11th and 12th of the year. That's not a lot of interceptions. This is the 10th game of the season, but they have been uh, pivotal in determining our 6-0 score at the moment. Here's a quick pass out here. Getting inside the 40-yard line, Jason Carter on the receiving end this time. 13-yard pickup and a first down. Man coverage. They get man coverage right here and uh, just a little out route because they came with a blitz on the outside. And, you know, Reggie did a great job of reading. And that's what he said about the uh, empty set. You know, when they went in the backfield, he really gets a good read of where they're coming from. And he did a great job of showing that there. Reggie McNeil is so soft-spoken, but he has plays with a quiet confidence. Now well, we got movement here in the line. And we get penalty markers once again. You know, that's uh, talking to defensive coaches I know in pro football. They say that... Part of the snap, false start, offense, number 64 and number 75. Remains first down. Jamie Hightower, Kirk... Well, Hunter, I was just saying, guilty. yeah, that uh, motioning to empty as they did then is the most difficult. You have to make the adjustment on the run. And uh, they did it there, and they had a blitz on. So it would have been interesting to see if Reggie would have been able to get rid of the football there. All back now at the 44-yard line. McNeil throws out to the near side, making the catch is Riley. And he picks up five yards. Well, we asked you the Aflac trivia question a while ago. Name the only three Big 12 schools that have been bowl eligible every year since the conference was formed in 96. The answer? Well, here they come. Texas Tech is included, along with K-State and Nebraska. Some folks may have been a bit surprised, Coach, that uh, Texas and Oklahoma are included in, were not included in that group. How about me? <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were one of those. Huh? I was one of those. Inside pitch. Thomas, Terrence Thomas. Not much working there. Let's get an update on the Virginia-Miami game that's going on as we go to John Saunders in New York. Well, Miami had grabbed the lead, but Virginia comes back. Marquise Tagans to Heath Miller. Watch the grab. One hand, pull it in, casually, three yards on the play, ties the game at seven apiece. This, a huge game for the ACC title. Boy, that was a sweet one-handed grab to tie that score of that ball game, too. I tell you, that young man led the nation tight ends receiving last year. He was a heck of a football player. When he catches like that, we know why. 
McNeil dancing back, buying some time, scrambling, pressure, Ooh. down he goes. Adele Duckett, he was all over him that time. Lost so, seven. That's a... Yeah, and you really you can give us, you can see Duckett on his rush right here, and you see him trying, he does a great job of containing, keeping Reggie in the pocket. And then all of a sudden, that's a, a sack you can give credit to the secondary because nobody was open. He had plenty of time to throw it, but Duckett was persistent, kept him in the pocket, and was able to sack him. Third sack this year for Adell at 27th of his career, playing here for the Texas Tech defense. I think he had 14 last year. He's a heck of a pass rusher. Did a great job right there. So a punting situation. Let's see what happens now. If in fact they will kick it, and yes, they do. Trying to angle it down there toward the corner. Let the defenders run under it. Hits it to five. Oh, this is a gorgeous punt. And look at that. At about the two-yard line. Nicely done that time. Punter Jacob Young averaging 38 yards a game coming in on his kicks. That time hung it up there and let the defenders run under it and down it at the three-yard line. Despite genetic similarities, siblings often harbor tension between each other. This can result in provocation that gets the older counterpart. But these are merely attempts to discover his place in the family. Cobalt, the new commotion coming to the Chevy family. I'm sorry, I was driving too fast. No, really, totally my fault. The good thing is we're okay. There's so many more important things in life. If I'm not mistaken, you must be gelling. Like Magellan. Are you gelling yet? Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles are made from the softest gel ever created. If you and your shoes don't feel outrageously comfortable, you get your money back. Guaranteed. Come on! Listen to that yelling. He's so not jelling. Are you jelling? Dr. Scholl's. Like a human fingerprint, each whale's fluke is unique. At Pacific Life, we know that no two individuals have the same financial goals. For over 135 years, we've used our experience to help millions of Americans reach their goals. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. This Wednesday, these survivors will discover one of the island's darkest secrets. Hello? They are not alone. Who are you? An all-new Lost, Wednesday, 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Well, after Young's punt pins the tech back at the three-yard line. That has just ignited even further the 12th man here at College Station. Standing, roaring, waving the flags, making a ton of noise. Sonny Cumbie will standing in shotgun formation two yards deep into the end zone to start this series. Got flags again. There was movement in the lines. Crowd reacting as the big back or Johnny Mack was uh, banged down there, but that was, of course, well after the whistles and the flags. It looked like they stopped the play, but it didn't. Uh, you know, if it didn't, it's a safety, but I didn't hear whistles. I heard the whistle, the play, I think, prior you? to the start of a coach, I, I believe. You got better hearing than I do. We'll find out here in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Offside, defense, it's a left tackle. Oh. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. Reaction of the coaches. We've had nine penalties already in this ball game. Six minutes into the second quarter. If you're just joining us here, great rivalry. It started in 1927 between Tech and AM. AM has the six points on the board, and Tech trying to dig themselves out of a hole. Ball now up at the eight yard line. Gumby looking. Now trying to create throws on the run and misses the intended receiver, Clay McGuire, out of the backfield, who's caught only three balls this year. Gumby is struggling. You know, the old gunslinger, he's had a tough time this far, Coach. Yeah, and I think you've got to give a lot of credit to Texas Tech defense, in particular to uh, Johnny Jolly. He's <laughs> caused two interceptions. 
The first one he caused him to throw high, and on the last one he forced it to be batted up in the air. So it's uh, been a Johnny Jolly show as far as his interception is concerned. Jafus Brown, the redshirt freshman, and Archie McDaniel, a junior, coming up with the two picks. 16 interceptions on the year for Cumbie. Second down. Little play action, throws out here, completes this one at the 15, Amendola. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not Amendola, it's Joey Hawkins. Hawkins rolling up some first down yardage. We mentioned how that's a big body. He's 6'9", <laughs> and close to 250 pounds, 20-yard pickup. Yeah, he comes out and the defender uh, fell down. I don't see exactly what happened to him, but catches a little sideline route. Good throw there by Cumbie. He was struggling. He needed to, to make a good throw because he's really struggled so far. Yeah, can't help but wonder how important it is to get a little rhythm going in a situation like this. It's a cold, raw day. The wind is not extreme, but it's definitely chilly down there on the playing field. Wind swirling around. Cumbie this time going to Mac. Johnny Mac banging his way for two or three tough yards up close to the 33 34 yard line you know we talked to uh torbush a uh, defensive coordinator at and he said he was going to use six and seven defensive backs and there may be a reason we're seeing so much running as you've seen from uh texas tech today uh, figuring that they can run against these defensive backs There's six defensive backs in there now, Gary. They're in a shotgun formation here. Yep. Those big line splits. And an inside handoff. It's Mac again. He gets very close to a first down. If he doesn't have it, he's going to be awful close to it at about the 37 38 yard line. Good tackle there by David Ross. Again, they kind of fooled him there. Well, coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Craig, former Notre Dame All-American Aaron Taylor. The left scores and highlights, including that big tilt in the SEC between number eight, Georgia, and number three, Auburn. That's on our Capital One Halftime Show. We're going to bring the chains in to measure this one and find out whether or not he did get the first down. Yeah, they kind of crossed him up there, Gary. They gave him that big line split like it's going to be a pass play and ran a little draw, so. You were mentioning the defensive coordinator, Carl Torbush, and talking about all those defensive backs, and uh, he said they would have probably six or maybe even seven defensive backs up to 80% of the time. That was the anticipation coming into this game. Then he made an interesting comment. He said that they would throw so much that the reason they've been so successful in the second half is they keep running these routes and the defensive backs get worn out. Oh, and the company drilled that one in there at the 47-yard line. The catch is made by Trey Haverty. He put a little zip on that one. <laughs> a little heat on that one. He got that and threw it in. A good catch there by Haverty. Nine-yard pickup. They've moved the football on a couple of times with those two interceptions that we referenced just a few moments ago have been killing for Mike Leach and his crew. See Texas and him running those defensive backs in and out. Kind of a chess match, isn't it? A little guessing game. Got a couple of receivers split wide to the left side. Got two big tight ends in there. May see a run here because, again, there are six defensive backs. And that's what you got to run. Henderson to the 50-yard line. Three-yard game. That's why it's fun from my standpoint, Coach, to have you and coach alongside you you pick up on these things immediately and you can educate all of us in that sense i wish that was true all the time sometimes <laughs> you're lucky i just saw two tight ends and six <laughs> defensive backs i figured they'd run got the first down right at midfield Kembe with lots of time but nobody to throw it to. Now finally finds a man and dumps it off there. Clay McGuire with only his fourth reception of the year. Good for four yards. Those defensive backs apparently doing a pretty good job downfield. Well, they really are. And there was two tight ends in there. Then you think you'd look for the run, but again, uh, crossed them up. I want to remind you at the conclusion of today's game, we select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Great, great backers of 
college football on ABC. Boy, it sounds like a swarm of very loud locusts at work here now. They, they practice their yelling here at midnight before every home game. Astounding the noise they make. Here's the little swing pass. And yeah, that may be close to another first down. Dorian Henderson advances for about six yard gain. Jory Adams and Johnny Jolly chase him across the way. Yeah, and that's really more like a running play. Instead of handing it off, he just kind of laddled it to him. And, uh, you know, the line just kind of hooked everybody, kind of run blocked all the way out. And really a well executed play. Ball just across the 40 yard line. It was good for a first down. Boy, you got to have some durability if you're going to be a Aggie fan here. You're on your feet, you're waving the towel, you're screaming your lungs out. It just goes on and on and on. Oh, did he get it? What a catch. What a catch. See if he made it. We're going to call it at the 21 yard line. Danny Amendola. One of the things that happens here is I'm watching down in the field. 19 yard gain. People jump up in front of you here, and when the ball's on the near sideline, it's virtually impossible to see. And I couldn't tell if he caught that ball or not. Oh, 17 yard pick. Catch. Oh, what a great terrific catch. catch. Yes, catch. indeed. Great throw, too. Good throw. Laid it out in front of him, but a one handed catch there. That's a true freshman from the Woodlands in Texas, Danny Amendola. Caught five balls coming into this game, one for a touchdown. The only true freshman on the Texas Tech roster. Another empty situation. Nobody in the backfield but a quarterback now. Texas Tech. This is what Cumbie loves. He throws and he finds one of those receivers bumping his way down is Cody Fuller. Now we were talking about the success of AM in the red zone. Let's check on what Texas Tech has been able to do in that department. 48 drives inside their opponent's 20. They have scored out of a possible 336, 257 points. 35 touchdowns, four field goals. That's 39 times out of 48 attempts that they converted in the red zone. Again, got the empty situation. Comes in the backfield. Four-man rush. Pocket holding up. Just a little bit too high at the three-yard line. The intended receiver was Jared Hicks. Great coverage in again. There's kind of a combination coverage, and they did a really good job of shutting out and covering all of those receivers. There wasn't anybody in the backfield except the quarterback, and they did a good job of covering him. Brock Newton was down there. Gumby encouraging his club now, trying to cash in on th this drive. This is their deepest penetration thus far in the ball game. Third and one. Oh, Gumby is it's going to be a penalty for substitution. Gumby now 9 12 of 19. On the offense. Five-yard penalty Ooh. remains third down. Wow. Those are drive killers right there sometimes. Yeah. What do you have, too many men on the field, Coach? Yes. Yeah, he was uh, trying to get off at the top of the screen there and didn't get anywhere near there in time. Well, obviously, for Sonny Cumbie, and Texas Tech. This third down play is a big one. Henderson got a blocker in front of him. Henderson first down as he gets to the 10 and possibly the nine yard line. Eight yards picked up on a critical third and six. Johnny Jolly again out there. You see a little screen pass right here, and you see he makes a great effort. Gets a block, breaks a tackle right there, and makes the first down. Great second effort. Ball just inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and 10 listed. Actually, it looks like it'll be first and goal because it, the nose of the football is just across the 10. Using hand signals here against this deafening noise Anderson to the near side oh he tight ropes the sidelines and he has scored to tie this game what great feat that time it looked like for sure he was going to be out of bounds but somehow Anderson stayed in and we've got a tie ball game and a chance for Tech to go on top 
I'll tell you, he's got great feet. Uh, tremendous quickness, a little pursuit coming from the inside. You see, he lays it off. Nobody open downfield. And he just really outruns, uh, you know, the end that dropped out right there on the defense and get it in the end zone. Well, that's his second, uh, 13th rushing touchdown. The extra point attempt is good, so we've got a change in the leadership here with four and a half minutes to play in our first half. Texas Tech now says, come catch us if you can. Research shows millions of people think they have antivirus protection, but the fact is they are completely vulnerable to computer viruses. At AOL, we now have an antivirus service that protects the whole computer, not just email. And it automatically updates to protect against new viruses. So our members are fully protected, and it doesn't cost much. Only Wait a minute. Instead of charging members for all this stuff, why not just give it to us, you know? For free. Good idea. Millions of Americans are just asking for a computer virus because they're not nearly as protected as they think they are. That's why, starting this November, America Online is giving away comprehensive computer virus protection to our members, absolutely free. That would be really cool. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. Will it be A or B? A or B? All a man wants is a cold beer and he gets hit with the pop quiz. And now's when a high life man licks his number two pencil and proudly writes down A and B. Tests always make me thirsty. Texas Tech finding the scoreboard for the first time, and coach, they did it in impressive fashion. They went 97 yards and 13 plays. Yeah, they really did. And Cumbie hit a lot of receivers. Amendola made a one-handed catch there with good screen pass on third and six. Henderson, great second effort, makes it first down. And then, how about walking the tight rope? Right down the sideline, gets it in the end zone. Great play, great drive. Caps it off with a touchdown instead of a field goal. Well, they here have kind of dominated it, and now they're behind seven to six. Here are the possessions today for Texas Tech. You saw the two interceptions and a punt, but that time going the length of the field. Come on that drive, hit eight of ten passes. He had been struggling with those interceptions, but he came back firing, and now A&M will get their hands on the football. It's going to be a short kick at about the 19-yard line. Back to about the 26. Fielded by Keith Joseph. Yeah, the big fullback. I wonder how many kick returns he's had this year. I bet there haven't been many. He's up there in the wedge and made the, made the catch. Got a good field position out around the 27. Texas Tech, number one. Number one, Texas, baby. There's Torian Anderson on the sideline. And Nehemiah Glover. We knew we'd see him today, just not in uniform. Oh, what a shame. Glover. Yeah, really is. He's an exciting player. He has uh, done a lot of amazing things. Caught 56 balls this year, scored a touchdown. He's one of the offensive captains, but with a foot injury, not in uniform. Play action fake. Reggie McNeil finds his man at the 40-yard line. That's Boone Stutz. The tight end, he's caught only eight balls this year. And what a character this fellow is. Coach, we enjoyed chatting with him yesterday. I'm telling you, he is a different kind of guy, but <laughs> boy, a great uh, player. He coaches, followed Coach uh, Franchoni from everywhere he's been. That's he right. From TCU to Alabama and then here. So he, uh, he's definitely having a good time playing football. We're going to check in momentarily or after this next play with uh, Vince down on the sidelines. He's going to tell us a little more about this guy, Boone Stutz. That's fun. From the 44-yard line. Well, Terrence Murphy out here on the near side being congratulated. An 11-yard pickup. Vince, go ahead. Well, Boone Stutz is an interesting story. He... Uh, was not a big-time high school football player, but instead was a long snapper and thought that may, might be his opportunity in college. So he was going to go to TCU and play for Dennis Franchoni. And Franchoni
Franchoni at that time decided he was going to Alabama, so Stutz followed him along to Alabama. And after a couple of years for the Crimson Tide, Franchoni came to Texas A&M. Boone Stutz realized that he was not going to figure into the plans for the Crimson Tide, so he transferred here to Texas A&M. So Stutz following Franchoni around, and it's been very successful. May not make it as a tight end, but probably as a future in the NFL as a long snapper. Courtney Lewis goes to work to the outside. That cuts up field across the 40 to about the 38-yard line. Six-yard pickup for Lewis. Well, a good tackle there by Mike Smith, but that was a good cut. Uh, wasn't a lot there, but cut up inside and picks up about seven yards. I tell you, Gary, that Boone's a character. He described his position coach as not your norm. I'd say that you could describe Boone as not your norm. He's a character now. He says someday he'd like to have his own fishing show on TV. <laughs> he loves to go bass fishing, among other things. Came in barefoot yesterday. Short time. <laughs> All right, we've got uh, penalty markers here as this series gets set to unfold. Top of the hour here in Texas in a 7-6 ball game. Prior we anticipated the, snap, the shootout. Ball start, number 75 offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Jamie Hightower with the movement there. It results in the penalty. I wanted to mention that I'm Gary Gerald along with Dan Reeves, Vince Welch. We just heard from Vince down on the sidelines a few moments ago. We expected to see these teams put a lot of points on the scoreboard. That has not been the case thus far. It's a 7-6 nail-biter, if you will, as we move inside three minutes to play in the first half. At the 44-yard line of Tech, a and now trying to generate. McNeil backs up. Here comes the delayed blitz. He throws. He completes the pass. Making the snag is Kerry Franks, a freshman out of Orange, Texas. A 12-yard gain, and he got rid of that just in time, didn't he, Dan? Yeah, it was a very good throw. He kind of threw it off his back foot because he's getting a little pressure, but made it look like it's going to be a run, set up, and watch him just as he gets pressure. He threw it off his back foot and made a perfect throw. Right out in front of him. That's where you want that ball, uh, out in front of the receiver. And great uh, catch here by Kerry Franks. Vincent Meeks made the tackle. Brock Stratton was one of those that was pressuring McNeil. Here's the offensive production wall. Didn't get much of a chance to look at that because we're ready for the play. Out of the shotgun. Ready, looking, being chased. Flushed out of the pocket. Still being chased. And he throws it to the far sidelines and just throws it away. Vincent Meeks and Fletcher Session both coming on strong that time with the pressure. Yeah. That was good coverage again. Uh, Texas Tech defense really didn't have anybody open. Reggie just had to throw it away. Now we get back to taking a look here at the... Uh, Offensive production. Yardage is now evened up here. The average per play is better than six yards. Only one touchdown scored, however. Frankly, that's been a surprise. We were going to take the uh, over and under. <laughs> McNeil, 8 of 11 for 113 yards. With play action, buys some time, now finds his man out here. Doing the little dance at the 30-yard line is Jason Carter. It's down close to the 26-27, and now late flags come in. Yeah. It's going to be a big one. Well, we've had too many of these huddles here amongst the guys in stripes today. There's been a lot of penalties in this first half. Most of them have been of the incidental variety. Coach doesn't think that's the case this time. Uh. Dead ball, personal foul, number 676, hitting after the play. The down was over, so it's going to be third down with a 15-yard penalty. This is Aldo De La Garza. Yeah, it's really a big play and just uncalled for. Uh, you like to see people hustle, but that's really, really late. People can get hurt there and really hurt your football team because you had it down close to field goal range and just not a not a good play. Joe Garcia, a redshirt freshman out of Clovis, New Mexico, was on the receiving end of that late hit from De La Garza. See the penalties now evened up six for each club. Clock becoming a factor here now in the late stages of the first half. McNeil is going deep. 
in a traffic jam down there was Terrence Murphy who drew double coverage and that one was thrown out of bounds. Coming up again, we remind you of the Capital One halftime show as we'll go to our New York studios and check in with Craig James and John Saunders, Aaron Taylor, scores, highlights, and uh, of course they'll be right up to date in that big SEC matchup between Georgia and Auburn. A couple of top 10 ranked teams. Oh, that was a big penalty gear there. Got it down in field goal range. Free if you don't make a first down, you got a chance for a field goal. Now you got to punch the football. Standing back at his own 44 yard line, Jacob Young. He hung the last one up and they downed it at the three yard line. They got a chance again. No, it goes into the end zone. Boy, Amendola, was that? Uh, no, I'm sorry. There, he had uh, had a player down there with an opportunity to nail that one. Jacob Young yeah, was just the punter. A you know, little bit too far and then it bounced up high. Couldn't knock it back because he couldn't stay up there long enough. He, uh, he boomed it up there. Well, a minute and 21 seconds to play in this second quarter. This drive will start at the 20. Last time, Cumbie took his club 97 yards to their first score of the day, and it was enough to put them in the lead, 7-6. Fuller dances out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. Was he wide open? Yeah, well-executed play. Had three receivers on one side. Cleared it out. On that side, uh, you see the three receivers there, kind of cleared it out. With Hicks right there, and Hicks uh, full underneath. Very well executed play. That's a 19-yard gain for the first down. Three-man, now four-man rush, but they pick it up. Oh, ball dropped right across midfield. Fuller, who made the catch on the last one. Good hang going, out of that one. Yeah, he was going to run with that one a little bit before it got there. Kind of started to run with it, took his eyes off of it, and that's all it takes. But, you know, Texas Tech, this is nothing. Being in the two-minute attack, they're in the two-minute attack every play, so this is nothing for them. Gumby's had much bigger numbers in the second quarter as opposed to the first. And out of the shotgun, he shovels the pass inside. Henderson only gets to about the 42-43 yard line this time, a four-yard pickup. In the first quarter, Cumbie was four of six, 44 yards, and had an interception. Second quarter, he also had an interception, but he has made hit 11 of 17 for 119 yards. Big third down right here. This way they let the clock run because they want to make sure they make this third down and not give AM a lot of time. So we were down to 38 seconds to go. Tech defense was all, uh, the a and defense was ready for that Tech assault. I'll tell you, Brock Newton has made some unbelievable plays this half. He's covered well, and boy, does he come up and put a lick on the receiver in that play. So with the loss, it'll be fourth down and nine, and they're just letting that clock wind right down here as we're going to be sending both teams to their respective locker rooms momentarily. Fact, they won't even risk any type of a punt. Mike Leach says, well done, guys. They stuttered and staggered a little bit with those two interceptions early on. The most that AM could get was a couple of field goals, and then Tech came right back to lead it. Let's go to the sidelines and Vince. Well, we're going to wait just for a second. My apologies. Oh, you see Mike Leach walking along there. Kind of surprised that uh, AM and m didn't call timeout and make them punt the football there. You know, they may want to block it or run it back, but uh, Coach Fran decided that he just let the clock run out. Now, Mike Leach, you watch him as he makes his way across the field to where uh, Vince Welch is standing by. You all set, Vince? Coach, you had a couple of turnovers, but you still take the lead at halftime. What's the message to the team? Uh, we need to play a better half next half. In what manner? Uh, not turn it over, uh, execute plays, not drop balls, uh, don't let them move it down the field, all those things. We just got to play a good second half. Thanks, Coach. 
more of a defensive battle than uh, I think a lot of folks expected here today, Gary. Well, I know a couple of guys up here in the booth are thought we are going to see a lot more points scored than we have. It's a 7-6 ball game, an ABC Sports presentation of college football. We'll return after this message. A word from our ABC stations, then we'll be sending you on to our studios in New York. Two doors, four doors, room for five, room for nine, off-road, OnStar. Nobody offers more truck models and SUV choices than Chevy. These trucks are the real deal. And they play for the same team. That's why I drive Chevy, the right truck. The official truck of an American revolution. Perfect timing. Monday Night Football. And... Whoa, the new Double Melt Pizza. Layers of flavor, cheese, crust, sauce. Thanks, man. Domino's Pizza congratulates ABC's Monday Night Football on its 35th anniversary. Monday Night Football and Domino's. It's all you need. Why do we work? Why do we get up every day and go to work? Because we make things, fix things send our kids off to learn things. At the Principal Financial Group, we know you don't just work to retire, you work to live. That's why we give people the financial tools to help them keep more of the money they make and do more with the money they save. You work hard, we make work work hard for you. The Principal Financial Group, we understand what you're working for. Okay, sir, here's your Avis care package with local information, traffic rules, and a map. What would it be like if Avis didn't try harder? Did, did Brad ask about me? Well, Do you have a map? I gave you a map. Uh-huh. Uh, no, you didn't. Yeah. I never... Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I, check it I never got it. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. no. Yes. Can I have another map? No. Okay. If we didn't try harder, we wouldn't be Avis. Thanks. Now rent three times and get a free weekend on us. Go to avis.com to find out more. My dad calls it being spontaneous. We jump in our new Nissan Pathfinder and go. We see trees, mountains, and lakes. We sing corny songs. I really like motorcycles. I love our new Pathfinder. Ever since we got it, we do a lot of this spontaneous stuff. The new seven-passenger, 270-horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Lease the new seven-passenger Nissan Pathfinder at the special introductory rate. The Railroad Killer. Murder Cells. Tuesday at 10. This week's BCS standings, the most notable change down there at the bottom in the number six hole where Texas is sitting. Texas gets there passing Utah, and that's the spot Utah needs to be in to get an automatic berth. So Texas today against Kansas, and it was a struggle. Brian Luke, 21 yards to Charles Gordon. Yeah, they barely kept that spot here, and they had to really hump it to get there because Kansas showed up ready to play. Nabusi punches this one out. Kansas has the lead still. Then Brian Luke leads him on another drive. Two yards to Lionel Anderson. But then it was time for Vince Young to take over. You know, Captain Young, they call him now, the old comeback kid. He did it against Oklahoma State. He does it again here. This after, what was it, a, a fourth, fourth and 18. 18. Unbelievable. Northwestern against Michigan. Mike Hart, the other true freshman people are talking about. 34 yards in this run. What a little bulldog. He says, you can't arm tackle me and stop calling me Michael. Only my mama calls me that. <laughs> well, we'll call him Mike. We'll call him a winner if he keeps running like this. 16 yards on this run. He had 151 on the day. Boise State and San Jose State. Boise State screaming. Hey, we're undefeated. Lance Martin, one yard. Ties the game at 42. Going to the second overtime here. John Hammondaller from a yard up. And Boise State has the lead, and they hold off San Jose State to win it. You know what? This comes down to the classification of what is Boise State doing at number 10 in the BCS standings? Are you kidding me? Just having to hold on in overtime. Boston College, West Virginia. Winner of this one would be in the driver's seat for the Big East title. Will Blackman, 71 yards in the return. This was the story of the
today, John. BC special teams setting up two big punt returns, one for a touchdown we just saw right here. Also getting it done defensively. BC, we knew it was going to be a great matchup to try and shut down that powerful uh, Rashid Marshall, West Virginia Mountaineer offense. They got it done in special mm -hmm. teams of defense today. You go back to the Texas Longhorns, as you do, to pull out a victory like that. And in back-to-back -back weeks to do that, really, they're showing, I think, that they do deserve to be in that spot instead of Utah. Well, you think about it. Well, how big was that touchdown by them? It's a $15,000 save at Kansas. The goalposts yeah. don't come down. It's a $15 million potential save for Texas if they get that at-large berth going to the BCS. It's a huge win. Mac Brown, we're already sitting up here between us. We're saying, hey, Mac Brown did it again. Texas loses that game again. They shouldn't. But I tell you what, we're already starting to see in the individual polls that how you win plays an impact. So there's a lot of people that saw that Texas game, so it would be very interesting to see what happens with no, the alignment. That won't negatively impact them. With three yeah. undefeated the Kansas? Kansas? The top. They're not a the at-large berths are going to be huge. So that's a big win for Texas. Keep going at it, guys. You're out of time. Tuck your helmets. <laughs> this is the Capital One. The Capital One Halftime Show. Brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Tis the season. <laughs> <laughs> well, which card are you using? Those rates are brutal. Nah, I'll use our new Capital One Prime Lock card. The new Prime Lock card from Capital One. It's set at Prime so you never have to worry about your interest rate again. What's in your wallet? Somewhere, there's a man accessing sensitive information by way of a fingerprint. While a woman keeps track of millions of dollars in inventory, safeguarding it from the warehouse to your house. And a dad checks on his business from his son's baseball game. What do all these people have in common? They rely on America's number one security company, ADT. Always there. There is a place, a place where the wind blows for the sake of science and the laws of gravity are defied, where the Earth's history is uncovered, sunken cities are discovered, and you can see the core of the Earth in the center of campus. There is a place with rich history and timeless tradition that strives to teach, discover, and create the future. Where is this place? This place is Texas a and University. It's more than the coaches. More than the fame. More than the players. More than the game. Big 12 Conference. More than the game. to the Capital One Halftime Show. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. As the weeks come down, the picture is supposed to get a little clearer. The national championship race is very wide open. Auburn, though, with a chance this week facing Georgia, if they get an impressive win, you had to figure they had a shot at least to go past Oklahoma in the BCS standings. Jason Campbell, the Cadillac Williams. Me, me. Auburn has his seven to nothing lead, but the pressure was on David Green early. Auburn doing a very good job of putting pressure on the quarterback, and when you do that, it helps out your offense tremendously. Georgia was supposed to have the defense that was going to give Campbell troubles today, not seeing it happen. Green pressured again, decides to throw it to the end zone, and is picked off by Carlos Rogers. Auburn's defense getting it done. Then Jason Campbell, the pitch to the Cadillac. Beep, beep. 36 yards to Anthony Mix. There's no beep, beep to this. This is just a throw, throw. Free safety comes up, overreacts, trying to stop the running game, and the Cadillac puts it in the air. Nice play. Auburn's one of those strong teams right now. Everybody's wanting to know if they're going to jump over all Oklahoma. I, I really believe this. At the end of the day, when you shake it all out, okay, mm -hmm. the two best conferences, the Big 12 and the SEC champions, they deserve a chance to play in the national championship game. The Pac-10 is not as strong this year. Right? And so, therefore, if somebody's going to be left out, who's going to get left out? I'd go ahead and throw out USC.
I, I, I guys, guys, I happen to be a, a big <laughs> Oklahoma fan, and what I'm seeing right now is a very good Auburn team. And what I'm seeing is balance. They're playing very good defensively. They're playing very good offensively. Their special teams are solid. That's something, even though they gave up a punt block today, but that's something we haven't seen out of some of the teams we've mentioned. USC had to go down the wire last week. Oklahoma on defense, giving up a lot of points in the, in the, in the last couple <laughs> ball games. Auburn looking good together as a team. I think that's what's going to take them through. You're yeah. going to punish the entire USC program because of the rest of their conference isn't as good. It's going to be a situation where three teams deserve to play for the national championship. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to get punted and knocked out of the deal, and I'd go with strength of conference schedule. Right now, the Pac-10 is not as good as the SEC or Big 12. And they're the only one of the top three that don't have to play in a championship game, Thank so they you. may get a buy on that one as well. Wisconsin unbeaten. They have their eyes on the Rose Bowl right now. If they win out, they get at least that. But problems here on special teams. Block punt by Marshall Campbell. Travis Key recovers it in the end zone for a touchdown. Michigan State has a 14-7 lead. Matt Bernstein comes back, though. Nine yards on the touchdown run to tie this game at 14 apiece. But then watch this play. Damon Dowdell hands it off to Jason T, who, as he's being tackled, flips it to Aaron Alexander. Then he gets up, does T. And he's wide open for the touchdown. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and Michigan State was certainly lucky on this play. Scoring on a, a trick play like that and scoring on a blunt puck, that's what's keeping them in this ball game right now. Anthony Davis with over 120 yards, but Wisconsin in danger of losing their undefeated status. Miami facing Virginia. Larry Coker's squad has lost back-to-back -back games, but they still have a chance to win the ACC. Frank Gore from 11 yards out. This is like Craig James used to run. Oh, yeah. Keep the helmet on, young man. You'll protect that nose. But, man, Miami's offense today really showing up because they had to. The defense has been hurt. Defense has been terrible the last few weeks. Marquise Higgins, three yards to Heath Miller as Virginia ties the game at seven apiece. But Brock Berlin, Berlin rather, has really had a better year than people talked about. Much maligned all year long, and they call this the tat offense. Take a turn. But today, Brock Berlin has taken his turn of showing up and playing and giving their offense a chance. The winner of this game with the inside track to win the ACC and get that BCS berth. Cal against Washington, 7-6. to six. Now, Cal, everybody's talking about the one-loss teams and saying that they are the best of the one-loss teams. But, boy, they are not showing it. If the Pac-10 is that weak, then what's Washington doing in this game right now? Supports what I said just a moment ago about the Pac-10. I mean, Cal's a good football team. Somebody's going to get messed around in this scenario here. And if it's going to happen, you really look back to the strength of schedule. Cal's a good football team. With their ability and their explosiveness, I wouldn't be surprised if they go out and score 30 in the second half against Washington. That's yeah, going to be interesting today. Guys, what we're seeing right now is there's all these teams right now are playing for, it's an audition for all these at-large teams, teams that want to go on and play in these ball games. You have to show up and play some football right now. You don't want to be up by a point against Washington. And if you're a cow, you got to get it done, baby. Beauty show contest. up and play. It's a beauty contest. A lot of teams looking past this week onto other weeks. By the way, Pitt has just grabbed a field goal and a victory, or rather a lead over Notre Dame. 31 to 28 is the score. This is the Capital One Halftime Show. Capital One Mascot True Love Challenge. Twelve handsome mascots will compete for this lovely maiden's heart. The one she chooses will be the Capital One National Mascot of the Year. Who will she spend her life with? The possibilities of love. He has your exoskeleton. A love that lasts forever and ever. Help Melissa choose by voting at CapitalOneBowl.com for the National Mascot of the Year. Tune in to the Capital One Bowl to see who wins. What's in your wallet? Yeah, my brother-in-law, he's always inviting me over to watch his big, fancy TV. And you hate him for it. So you want something bigger and better for a lot less money. Yeah. Right now at Circuit City, get your choice of a free portable DVD player or Xbox holiday bundle when you buy any projection or plasma TV, $14.99 and up. Circuit City. The Capital One Halftime Show. Brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? This Sunday, America's biggest musical artists are going head to head. 
It's the American Music Awards live on ABC. Who will be crowned favorite female? And will Usher sweep them all? With special appearances by Lenny Kravitz, Jessica Simpson, Kenny Chesney, the solo debut of Gwen Stefani, plus Clay Aiken, and see a special sneak peek at next week's Desperate Housewives. Who will win the biggest award in music? Jimmy Kimmel hosts the American Music Awards live Sunday at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Join us next Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, where most of you will see Michigan face Ohio State in a big game out of the Big Ten. Others will see an ACC matchup or on the West Coast only Washington against Washington State. Today, Iowa against Minnesota. Drew Tate, 61 yards to James Townsend. They've now won six in a row. Drew Tate continues the heat. He is completing 62-plus percent of his passes, and Iowa is hot. Minnesota's still alive. They're looking for a 51-yard field goal. You can see it goes wide left, and Iowa wins Floyd of Rosedale. Penn State against Indiana. Could Joe Paterno get his first victory in the Big Ten this year? Zach Mills from two yards out. Punching it in from two yards out, Zach Mills. He needed that touchdown. He struggled a little bit this year, but it's the Nittany Lion defense that got it done today, John. Yeah, they stop him on the one-yard line four times. Penn State, Joe Paterno get their first victory in the Big Ten this year. Congratulations, and we'll continue with more after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Have you ever started a car from across the road? Given your backseat passengers a tan? Or driven a four-door like a sports car? Introducing the first ever G6 from Pontiac. New models are arriving daily, and now you can get one with a great offer like this. Be the first. See your Pontiac dealer. Now with Instant Replay. Shared instantly. Video phones from Nokia. Thanks for sharing. For Rodney, it was love at first sight. How about dinner and a movie? How do you feel about Italian? Bumper boats, mini golf. But to get this girl, he did something that no one expected. Trina! 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 All new Rodney, Tuesday, 9.30, 8.30 Central, only on ABC. Katie was sure of her cholesterol plan. She took medication, she ate right and ran. Yet it wasn't enough to get bad cholesterol low. What's this? I'm still here in the land of no. Switch to Crestor, her doctor said. You're not to blame. All cholesterol drugs simply aren't the same. When Crestor performed in a head-to-head -head test, its lowering effect was clearly the best. Crestor's proven effective. That's well understood. Would you like to try it? Why, yes. Yes, I would. Ask your doctor about Crestor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of serious side effects. Since Katie switched to Crestor, her cholesterol's much less. With Crestor and diet, it's the land of success. Get your free trial today, and you just might declare, I'm a Crestor success. Now you're getting somewhere. I mean, I used to date these guys, and I, I wonder, why doesn't this feel right? You know, why isn't he the one? And then I met Ben. You know, it's really nice when you realize you don't have to compromise. I mean, not to compare my man to a car, but, I mean, that's why I bought a Saturn. The 2005 Saturn Ion. Redesigned, uncompromised. Now with five years, 60,000 mile extended vehicle coverage, or a thousand dollar allowance. Big Team Swain Dolce Vino, winner of three Lone Star Emmys.
points all the way back to 1927. Texas Tech, Texas A&M. It's a low-scoring first game. Texas Tech got the late touchdown to lead by one. Let's learn more now about both of these great educational institutions. There is a place, a place where the wind blows for the sake of science and the laws of gravity are defined, where the Earth's history is uncovered, sunken cities are discovered, and you can see the core of the Earth in the center of campus. There is a place with rich history and timeless tradition that strives to teach, discover, and create the future. Where is this place? This place is Texas a and University. It's more than the coaches. More than the fame. More than the players. More than the game. Big 12 Conference. More than the game. Back at College Station, Texas, where Texas A&M and Texas Tech are in a battle. 7-6 to six at halftime. Texas Tech with the lead with Texas A&M coach Dennis Franchione. Coach, a little different half of football than what a lot of people expected. It wasn't the shootout. You got a couple of turnovers. You're plus two in that category, but you didn't convert in the red zone. Was that the message at halftime? I, I think you hit it pretty well right there. We got two turnovers. Our defense really played pretty solid. Um, we got to get some of our field goals into the end zone. and. It still may be a lot of points scored in this game yet with these two teams, so you never know. Are you surprised that Texas Tech ran the ball as much as they did in the first half? No, they're very capable of doing that, too. They get you all spread out and do a, a good job of that, so not at all. Congratulations on a good first half. Good luck. Let's go back upstairs to Gary. Well, Vince, you can count a couple of the guys that may be surprised are the two standing right here, Gary Gerald and Dan Reeves. And we were talking shootout. We were talking big numbers. We haven't seen it. How surprised are you, Coach? Well, I really was uh, very much surprised because I thought it would be a lot of points scored. And I think when you get out in the red zone, we talked about it, well, A&M has got to get the ball in the end zone. They can't be kicking the field goals when you play in a high-powered offense like Texas Tech. The scary thing, if you're an A&M fan, is – Texas Tech gets better as the game goes along. They've scored an awful lot of points in the second half this year. Well, it'll be interesting to see if that's the way it plays out. And we'll take a look at some of the numbers from this first half of action. You can see that 164 passing yards for Tech, 118 for Texas A&M. Penalties, six for each club. Anderson with 81 total yards, including the touchdown catch. Sonny Cumbie threw for 164 yards. McNeil 118. McNeil also rushed for 27. And now we're underway, and that's a great kickoff with no return for Johnny Mack. And Texas Tech, they'll bring it out, of course, to the 20-yard line. Well, Cumbie had those two interceptions in the first half of action, but here are the numbers, 17 of 25. Got the touchdown and that terrific run after catch by Dorian Henderson. Really just a one big uh, drive for Texas Tech. Went 97 yards. Started off with a penalty of offsides against uh, A&M to start that drive. Which well, that I was huge. Was big, yeah. And, uh, you know, so they had the one big drive. It's interesting to see what they could do here. Coach Franchoni indicating that both of these teams could still put up a lot of points before it's all said and done. Look at the time for Cumbie here. Now finally pressured. Throws into a crowd. We got a penalty marker down at the 35-yard line. Jackson Appel. Yeah, Appel came up with the interception. It's like it's against a and Looks like a pass interference call. Now they're backing everybody away there while the officials huddle and talk this over. Defensive pass interference, number 19. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Ooh. Automatic first down. There's Jackson Appel, number 19. You saw the reaction on the sideline. 
And he had all day to throw it. I thought this was a great reaction by Pell. And he really, he's got as much. That's a. He just got as much room for the for the uh, ball as does the receiver, and all he's doing is going for the ball. Uh, I don't know how you get pass interference out of that one, but Johnny Buell and Jackson Appel converging there. You saw the reaction from first Carl Tobush, the defensive coordinator, and then you saw Coach Fran. And now back on the ground, uh, close to the 40-yard line. <laughs> I tell you that. And New Brock Newton, I'm telling you, he's a. Uh, He's getting after him. He's coming in. He's playing for real now. Here's that last play that resulted in the penalty. Yeah, I just don't see it. Uh, I mean, you see a, a pal come in. Jackson comes in and makes a play on the ball. He's got as much right to it as the receiver does. I didn't see that call. Well, at the 39-yard line, second down now. First possession. Third quarter just getting underway. Well, kind of off the wrong foot. He flips it out there and completes it for a first down at about the 47-yard line. Cody Fuller. We are talking about Jackson Appel. What a character this young guy is. He spells his name J-A-X-S-O-N, Jackson. And he is relentless. I don't know. I, I guess uh, complete, complete disregard for my body. My mom always says that you are going to be uh, walking around like you're 60 when you're 30. So... I don't know. I, I just try to play the game as fast and as hard as I can and do what my coach is coaching me to do. Well, he does it very effectively and has all season long as this pass is completed now in A&M territory and pulling it in is Trey Haverty. Picks up six. So Kemby looks like, Coach, he's starting to very quietly but effectively move this ball club and rack up some numbers. Yeah, he does. And I tell you, Jackson... Appel is plays the game the way you like to have it. He's got a passion for the game. He's tough. He goes after him. And he usually doesn't miss a tackle. He's uh, very good as a safety. See that the 60, 60 tackles on the year, three of them for loss. Flushed from the pocket and throwing it out of bounds. On the near side is Gumby. Chris Harrington leading the pressure there for Texas A&M. Good play there by Cummy, though. He didn't have anybody open, and rather than take the loss, he was getting ready to get knocked out of bounds for a loss. He threw the ball away, so keeps it in a makeable third down situation here for about third and about four. Home of the 12th man, and boy, do they crank up the decibels in these situations. We've got the six defensive backs out there. They've converted two of five and third down opportunities thus far in this ball game. Henderson in the backfield alongside Cumby now switches to the left side. And we got a whistle here. It may have been too much time. Yeah, he was trying to change it. It may have been a run because they had two tight ends in the ball against six defensive backs. Well, we're going to get a timeout with the confusion here. So Tech takes the timeout, and we will break away from College Station. You guys on the road a lot? Yeah. Send your wives pictures with Sprint PCS Vision Picture Phones. Show them you're working hard. Show them your pretty face. Show them that prize bull. Check it out. More people use Sprint PCS Vision Picture Phones than any other to easily share unlimited pictures. Now at Sprint stores, buy one starting at $29.99. Just point and shoot. We know how to do that. <laughs> Sprint PCS. Now that's better. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I'm Taco Bell's new Big Bell Value Menu. A new menu with filling items, like half-pound burritos and double tacos. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the barn. It happens in every NCAA football game. An interception or a dramatic touchdown. One play changes the outcome. Now we're giving fans a chance to pick the Pontiac game-changing performance. Join me on ESPN to hear our predictions and watch the games. Afterward, go to ESPN.com slash Pontiac, see the five biggest game-changing performances, and vote for your favorite. Then watch Thursday's halftime show to see which school will receive a $5,000 general scholarship contribution from Pontiac. 
They set up in the eye on this, the last play of the game. And here's the snap. Hand off to the tailback. Peterson tries the right side. Wow, what a hit. But he stays on his feet, and he's broken to the outside, and it's wide open. Touchdown. Give him a touchdown. spiders at spdr.com harry potter and the sorcerer's stone tonight 8 7 central only on abc well tech took the timeout and it was a very close call but they got the timeout so it's still third and four coming out of the break so he's changing to play again at the line of scrimmage Inside handoff Henderson. He didn't get four. He didn't get anywhere near it. He got only a yard or so as the AM defense really muscled up. Let's go back to that timeout call, Coach. I want you to comment on this because this was really close. It really is. Watch the center now. He's got the ball there and watch. There comes the timeout and there's the ball coming back. So the official did see it, but it was really, really close as to where they got that call in time. <laughs> Going for it on fourth down here. Wow. Everybody on their feet now. This year, Tech on fourth down. They've converted 10 of 25. Maybe 25 fourth down attempts. Side. It's Maybe the most it. by any club in the Big 12. Yep. Tried to draw them offside. Good job by NM of holding it and not, not being offside. Well, now they change, and the kicking unit comes on to the field. He's just trying to draw him offside. You can see the quarterback's even bobbing his head a little bit to try to get the defensive line. Nobody to moved. And you saw the reaction immediately there from Johnny yeah. Jolly, number 97. He pumped a fist. He said, nope, you're not going to catch us. Yeah, we're smart. We're smart. You're not going to do it. We've jumped offside a couple times today, but not in this situation. Eric Mays awaiting the punt from Alex Reyes. Reyes stands back at his own 34-yard line. Booms it down the field, and now the fair catch is called for inside the 10-yard line. Well, coming up Sunday, that's tomorrow, the biggest artist in music going head-to-head -head for the American Music Awards. We'll have a chance to see performances by Lenny Kravitz, Toby Keith, Jessica Simpson, and many more on the American Music Awards on ABC. That's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, 7 central. Well, Reggie McNeil leads his troops out. Their first time to handle it for Coach Franchoni. To start his uh, first drive of theirs in the third quarter. Yeah, it was really a tough, fair catch right there. Right around the 10-yard line is the spot. He did make the fair catch signal and got the ball on a nine-yard line. Oh, a tough throw there, Reggie. Threw that one down on the ground. I don't know if that ball slipped out of his hand or what happened, but that was not a typical think, McNeil yeah. throw. I think it was tipped. It looked like it was a oh, tip ball. I'll have to look at it and see. But if it didn't, it was a bad throw if it wasn't tipped. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you are. Right Clearly there. was tipped. That looked like one of my passes if it Chris had been tipped. Chris Hudler got his hands up and knocked it down. Dangerous field position. Don't want to make a mistake down in this area and give uh, Texas Tech a real good field position. Stumbling and going down at the five-yard line with Courtney Lewis. John Solder with the pressure. Great defensive play there. Loss of three. Here are the last five possessions for AM. You see the first two resulted in field goals, but then punt, punt, and punt again. Right now they're looking at third and 13. John Salty made a great play right there. Had his dad at Dallas Cowboys, Jay Salty. That's his son, John. Did a really good job on that play. McNeil flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run. Nothing going there. So a kicking situation coming up. 
Excellent coverage right there by the Texas Tech defense. Good pressure on Reggie. Made him come out of the pocket and throw it on the run. Excellent pressure by Duckett. Jacob Young going back now. You see what he's been able to do on three punts today. The long being 49 yards. Excuse me. Had that one that was down at the three, but then a couple of penalties along the way, and Texas Tech was able to go 97 yards for their lone score. Chance to get actually field position right here by Texas Tech back up. Oh, that's not a real zone. good kick, Coach. Takes a nice bounce for him. Mendola uh -huh. stopped in his tracks, however, but they're going to start this break, start this uh, series inside the 50-yard line on a 40-yard punt. 7-6, Texas Tech over the Aggies by one. We spent our whole day dreaming about what an ATM could be, what it should be. We're working on cash deposits at our ATMs where you won't even have to use an envelope. You put the cash in, our ATM quickly scans, counts the cash, and totals it for you. I'm Dean Kirby. I'm a banker. I'm proud to be part of Bank of America. Bank of America has more ATMs around the country than any other bank, over 16,000 of them, and we never stop thinking about how to make them better. We've already carved at least six seconds out of the basic transaction. Doesn't sound like a lot unless you think of yourself in a van full of kids like I do. We're also working on transfers and payments at our ATMs. Watch. From checking, take $60 and pay towards your credit card. Or from checking, move $100 into your savings account. We're working on that. Imagine this, depositing checks. Now you see it on the screen, and we print that image on your receipt. At Bank of America, we want each of our ATMs to be a mini Bank of America. A mini bank as good as any big bank we've built. Bank of America. Higher standards. Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Hummer. Check out the H2. Hummer, like nothing else. The new singular, raising the bar. And Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. A gray overcast, chilly day in Texas. And a low scoring ball game, much to our surprise, at 7 6. But the best field position of the afternoon now for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, playing in this hostile environment at Kyle Field. Gumby comes out winging. Hicks loses the ball down the sidelines. May have gone out of bounds. Not often that you see Hicks lose the handle there as he was picking up nice yardage. And they're going to spot it at about the 27, 28 yard line. Real good key by Cumby though, getting it to the guy that's open and hit Hicks right there. And very fortunate that ball went out of bounds because mm. a lot of AM players coming to pick that one up. Well, that was a major league hit. So Hicks first down. The clock. Hicks has got to be getting close to that yardage. He didn't have, what was it to get to a thousand? He needed 17 to get a thousand, Coach. Yeah. They had him giving a little different look. Three-man rush right here. A lot of defensive backs in the game. Allen was overthrown, trying to go to Trey Haverty on the near side of the field. Still got good pressure, made him throw it a little bit off balance uh, on the play. So good job of changing up the defense by him. They're really doing a good job. Well, that makes it second and ten. Texas Tech averaging 37 points a game. Number seven in the nation in scoring average. They've got seven on the board here at this point in the early second half. Looking for more. Come a chase, hit from behind. Interception oh, picked off. It's Jonte Buell down the sidelines, cutting in to the middle of the field and pulled down at the 50, the 49 yard line. Jonte Buell. Yeah, Gary, great job out there of mixing up the defense, dropped the lineman out. 
Again, Jolly came out of the line, four-man rush, and they got good enough pressure and made him make a bad throw. Second pick today for Jonte Buell, who had had only one in the entire season thus far, out of Pflugerville, Texas. You watch uh, 97 right here. He drops out, lined up as a down lineman, moving around. Can't find anybody open. Three-man rush. Mike Great Montgomery. Pressure. Great pressure by Mike Montgomery right there. He but was all over from the backside. Well, that changes things around, certainly, and this much of the relief of this crowd. Courtney Lewis squirts his way forward. Josh Randall is there for the tackle. Well executed play there, got behind his blockers, came in on a little uh, counter tray, a little different kind of way to run the counter tray, but basically the play that the Washington Redskins made famous, and he followed his blocker and made good yardage there. Coaches always concerned about turnovers. Well, that's the third today by Texas Tech. AM trailing by one, trying to take advantage. Not on this play. Nothing <laughs> happened there whatsoever. Duckett made sure, I tell you. Duckett makes a great play. Same exact play that just ran the play before. And, yeah. Okay, here's the rush. So C-97 drop out. Okay, now they got really a three-man rush. Dropping eight. There's really nobody open. Gets good pressure there from Montgomery, and he causes a bad throw. Great interception right there. Good play. Changed the field position tremendously. Best field position Texas Tech had had. Now a and in their Texas Tech territory. The old gunslinger can be sitting over there kind of shaking his head, mulling things over after his third interception today, 17th of the year. Look at this, thrown for a loss. Majondo Mwamba coming through there with great penetration that time, and his teammates all over his back at number 90. Yeah, that was a quarterback draw. Joseph was going to lead him through the hole, and you can see uh, they had a stun up front, stunned right around, comes around, makes the play right there on Mwamba. Great play, but a stunt went right into the quarterback draw. Well, a punting situation, so a and M unable to take advantage of that interception and got him the ball just about in this exact spot where they are right now with fourth down. Oh, high snap. And pulled it down and got the kick off. Great, great, great fair catch. Amendola does a good job back there feeling it. Well, still a one-point ball game. Who's going to break out of this thing? That's what we're wondering. The Rose Bowl. New Year's Day, 100,000 fans will pack this place. Impressive number. Allstate has their own impressive number. One million. That's about how many drivers switched to Allstate last year. Enough to fill 10 Rose Bowls. Why? Many of them saved an average of $278 a year. Now that calls for a parade. Championship insurance for less. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? Dude, Singler's got this great deal. 1,000 nationwide anytime minutes plus rollover for only $39.99. Wow. But you gotta hurry. I'm on it. Get Singular's best value ever. 1,000 nationwide anytime minutes with rollover for just $39.99. And get this new Motorola camera phone. I call it my get it while you can plan. Our best value ever. Singular. Raising the bar. And I'm just cruising through with my buddies. We're just talking. All of a sudden I see a, a new Celica GTS just flying by. We went through traffic and I just jumped in. I just, it was, it's impulse. You know, like cat and mouse. When you see it, you just chase after it. When you're on the road and you get that feeling, if someone comes up behind you, if someone smokes you, you know you're going to go after it. That's the whole cat and mouse thing. It's just like nature. It's survival of the fittest. You're either the hunter or the hunted. Rated E for everyone. EA Games. Challenge everything. You're just one day away from the American Music Awards. Music's biggest artists are going head to head with live performances by Lenny Kravitz, Usher and Alicia Keys, Jessica Simpson, Toby Keith, and Gwen Stefani. The American Music Awards live tomorrow at 8, 7 central only on ABC. 
Checking out our Pacific Life game summary here at College Station, a 7-6 ball game. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech have the advantage. Todd Pegram staying perfect on the year, has not missed a field goal, hit a pair of 30-yarders in the first two drives. Sonny Christie had problems, or Sonny Cumbie had problems for Tech there in the couple of interceptions in the first three drives, but then Dorian Henderson had this terrific tightrope job down the sidelines for a 10-yard TD reception, the only touchdown that's been scored by either club. And that's where we stand here at the moment. 7.54 to go in our third quarter. Texas Tech gets the ball back after they had surrendered it on an interception. Anderson upended at the 14-yard line. And boy, the hitting is picking up down there, Coach. There's some serious head knocking going on right now. A good play right there. That's a play that they like to run a lot. And uh, A&M did a great job. Making the play right there, and Mays comes up, makes a good hit. He's a redshirt freshman. There are a lot of redshirt freshmen on that Texas A&M defense. Well, they do. They got a lot of good young football players. Certainly bodes well for the future. Defensive coordinator Carl Tobler talking yesterday about four terrific down linemen that he has as redshirt freshmen that he says all could possibly become pros after their collegiate careers. Easy. Grinding it out close to the 20-yard line. Henderson is the workhorse on the ground, a five-yard pickup. There's that seven, uh, it's either six or seven, uh, seven defensive backs in the game with a three-down lineman and ran the football against him. They did a good job of stopping the run. Let's listen in on this crowd now as they start to generate the decibels in a third and four or five situation. Big third down. Always third downs are big. I'm going to say for a coach, every third down is big. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> can be with lots of time this time. Boy, he can be so dangerous here, but his receivers are covered by all those defensive backs. He has to dump it off down here, incomplete at the 26-yard line. Yeah, drop by. Yeah, drop by Henderson there. But they had all day, but that's what happens. You rush three, you're going to get a lot of time. See, again, they drop out. 97 comes out. You see three men rushing, but they drop in eight, defending against the pass. Good play right here by Cumbie. Makes a good throw, hits him right in the chest between the one and the nine. But again, uh, Henderson took his eyes off that. Eric Mays awaiting the punt. A little pressure, but he gets it off. And Mays watches it bounce in midfield, going to let it roll, it appears. And it gets down inside the 40-yard line, down to the 39, a 41-yard punt. Well, let's check out our All-State BCS standings. Here are the actual numbers when all the computers go to work and they crunch everything down. And with that formula, this is the way the top five stand right now. And here is the bottom five, jockeying for positions and key bowl appearances coming up at the end of the season. Now today, we'll check out Auburn winning, California winning in their games. You see USC and Oklahoma playing later. Wisconsin losing in Michigan State last report. Bullet thrown to the 45-yard line. Crowd wanted an interference call, did not get it. Good, good play by Josh Rangel there. Good uh, break up of the pass. Rangel's been involved in a lot of these today. That time, Daquan Mobley was the intended receiver. Yeah, and Josh is backing up Chad Johnson, uh, who's not playing today, and he's done a really good job. Defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, Lyle Sentencich, making some wholesale changes now in his lineup as Reggie McNeil tries to rally his club. Inside six minutes to go in the third, trailing by one. Completes the pass to Murphy. It's out of the 48 yard line. Really good job there by Reg. Stepped up through the ball. You know, makes a very good throw. You know, gets it to T Murph on the play, and they pick up about eight yards, making it a third and two. And again, wholesale substitutions from the defensive alignment. Now, third and short yardage in this upcoming play. Just short of midfield, ball at the 47-yard line, AM in their own territory. 
This has been their option formation uh, third and short yardage early in the game. Let's see what they do. And he's off to the big fella. That big fella powered his way up there. Keith Joseph getting right to midfield. Looks like he may have gotten the first down. We'll wait for confirmation. That was about a three yard pickup. He needed two. Officials still eyeballing things. And now the indication of the first down. Keep the drive alive. That's what they got to do. Make some first down and keep the ball moving. Coach Franchoni pacing the sidelines here, consulting his chart notes. He has been the master rebuilder everywhere he has gone in his collegiate coaching career. 23 yards. He has yeah. generated success. So he got penalty markers flying in after the play appeared to go for only a, maybe a half yard gain. Maybe a lay hit or something. In. Yeah, they played that well. That play extremely well. Oh, face mask. Face mask. Five yards. Talk about turning things around. Here's what Coach Fran has done at Division 1A schools. The improvement from the first season to the second season. And he also did that at a couple of other smaller schools along the way, including uh, Pittsburgh State in Kansas and Southwest Kansas. He says he has a passion for building programs. Firing right down the middle and completing at the 35-yard line, the tight end, Boone Stutz. And look at him, boy. He, it takes three of those big Bulldogs to bring him down. <laughs> Boone Stutz is 6'6". He got his name in an interesting fashion. His parents, he's adopted. His given name was Jeffrey. His parents were driving from Texas to Oklahoma to pick him up to be an adopted youngster. And as they passed the road mark sign for Boone, Oklahoma, one of his parents said to the other, you know, that'd be a great name for our new son. <laughs> and Boone stuck. Here he is. Second reception today, 29 yards. Caught 10 balls this season. Pitch out. Haverty. I'm sorry, Carter. Jason Carter swinging around the corner out there. Let's quickly check in with John Saunders. He's standing by in our New York studios, of course. Alongside of Craig James and his Pontiac game-changing performance. Vincent Young just converted a fourth and 18 with a 22-yard run. Then hits Tony Jeffrey for the touchdown that might have saved $15 million in that at-large berth in the BCF. The Longhorns win, but they trail to it this entire game against Kansas. They win at 27-23. Wow, $15 million possible. See, that's a pretty, pretty impressive number right there that Craig came up with. Here's the pitch on the option. There's room to work. Oh, look at Lewis. Quits his way inside. Touchdown for the Aggies. They finally break through. 28 yards. Tremendous option play again. And uh, Reggie has shown he's very talented. He can do a lot of things. Great option play on that. Great pitch. Good timing. Well, you grab hold of your loved one if you're a longtime Aggie fan and you do a little smooching. Going for two lines. right here, right? Up 12 to 7. Looks like uh, Coach Franchoni is going to go for two. Seven plays, 61 yards, 2 minutes, 43 seconds on that drive. The first touchdown to go with a pair of field goals. It's a 12-7 ball game, and now they will go for two. Everybody's standing. And for short guys here in the broadcast booth, that sometimes creates problems. Here's McNeil, got his man, Teamer. Oh, penalty, penalty flag comes in. He made the catch, but let's Maybe wait and see. Pick. We've got a flag that came in the middle of the field. It might be a pick. They call uh, a and for what they call an illegal pick. I don't know, let's see what he calls. Here's Randy Crystal. Offensive pass interference, number nine, ran over the defensive player prior to making the catch. Well, that was Daquan Mobley, who was down on the near side. Okay. Okay, see number nine right here. He comes in. 
And he does. He just kind of uses his body to shield off the receiver, and that's what's called an illegal pick. Now that moves the ball way out here now. He's no longer down here in close range, so they're going to go for a single point from placement. Kyle Pegram, who has a couple of 30-yard field goals today, now with a long point after attempt of about 35 yards. going to be close. It's no good. It is no good. So they thought they had two to give them a 14-7 lead. That was taken away by the penalty and only for the fourth time this year. A point after attempt is missed by Pegram and it's a 12-7 ball game. Let's go back and look at that scoring play one more time. Well this is an option. You can see him coming off right here. You see a you know, real good block downfield right there, but a good run. And look at the block right there, which springs him uh, and gets a chance to go into the end zone. But watch how long he holds this thing and then pitches it. Okay, you're going to show me the block. Okay. Who was that, Carter? Okay. His eighth touchdown this year, Coach. Yeah, and I tell you, it's a great block. Look how, how much effort you get right here. You know, on the play, you see coming across, Boone gets a block there, Carter gets a block, gives him a chance to go in the end zone standing up. I tell you, it was a well-executed two-point play, but, uh, you know, the receiver, you know, is not supposed to run into the other player. He's just supposed to kind of make him change his path and just uh, stood there and blocked him. You can see how prolific these teams have been this season, generating nearly 70 points between them per game. That has not been the case today. Johnny Mack, Danny Amendola awaiting the kickoff now. Tech trailing by five. Mack from the four. He's across the 20. Oh, he's got some room to work. Tripped up at the 33-yard line. Well, nice return of 30 yards. Pretty good field position for Tech. We remind you that tonight, 8 o'clock Central or 7 Central, it's the incredible wizardry of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. The amazing movie on ABC's wonderful world of Disney. Tonight at 8, 7 Central. All right, the 12th man and 12th man has come alive. the bands. We've got both of them on the other side of the field from our vantage point here, high atop. And looking down on the action. Straight ahead, Johnny Mack trying to pounce off that right side a bit, gets a couple of yards. Puts it out of the 35-yard line. Good Johnny job Mack. again up front by that defensive line. They're really doing a good job playing a different front, four-man, three-man, and stopping the run. Senior out of Lakeland, Florida, stands only 5'7", packs 175 pounds. He's been a good one for Mark Leach and the Red Raiders this season. Cumbie throwing to the far side and a little bit high and off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Brian Bishop. Bishop getting the start today, in place of the injured Nehemiah Glover. So just a little bit high, definitely went to the right receiver to catch a pass but just threw it a little high. On this gray overcast draw chilly day in Texas. I think it's a big Shadow. third down. Well I, I think <laughs> this one would qualify coach. <laughs> big third down. Out of the pocket on the run. Cumbie hanging on to the football, tripped up well short for the first down after a gain of just a couple of yards. Not often that you see Sonny Cumbie having to tuck that ball and run it himself, but that was the case in that situation, and now the defense for the Aggies has forced Tech into a punting situation. Fantastic play right there by Jonte Buell. He did a good job of holding off, making him not throw it, and then when he did run, he came up and made the tackle. Eric Mays stands back, awaiting the punt. 
This should be returnable from the 30-yard line. Oops, change of direction. Harry's in trouble now. Going in the wrong direction. Pulled down at about the 28-yard line. Eric Mays. 33-yard punts and a negative return. You notice that there are names on the back of the jerseys for the Red Raiders, but that is not the case for the Aggies. Vince, what's the deal? Well, Coach uh, Dennis Franchoni last season after a 4-8 and eight campaign um, went to see the movie Miracle about the United States hockey team, of course, that uh, won the gold medal in the Olympics, pulled a big uh, upset over the Soviet Union. And uh, during the course of that movie, Herb Brooks, the coach for the United States Olympic hockey team, talked about the fact that you play for the name on the front of the jersey and not for the name on the back, or in, in the case of the Olympic team, not where they went to college, but uh, for the nation in which they were playing. And it's kind of the idea that Dennis Franchoni was using uh, when he decided to have the names removed from the back of the jerseys. They had the names on the back from a year ago, but this year, no names on the back. He says, you play for the name on the front. Well, they have played for the name pretty impressively this year. They started out 6-1. and one. They've lost their last two ball games. An overtime loss to Baylor, 35-34. And then the heartbreaking defeat last week at the hands of Oklahoma at 42-35. to Trying to get back in the win column today. And what we thought was going to be a wide-open, high-scoring okay. game, that has not been the case. And we're watching Eric Mays being helped here off the field. Take a look at the, the return attempt here and how he got bent backwards resulted in the injury. Yeah, you can see he's kind of retreating, got a lot of people coming after him, and you know, he's on the ground, but mm. then right there comes in and gets bent backwards. You know, great hit, legal hit, and everything. Uh, that hurts. Yeah, Dennis Franchoni is uh, one of those coaches, he will not comment at all about injuries. And he just figures that uh, there's no reason for anybody outside his immediate football family, the players and the coaching staff, the training staff, to know about the injuries. You know, why put information into the hands of an opponent who might help them? So he's very tight-lipped. And unless it is a season-ending injury, he will not comment about it, period, the end. That's a great rule in pro football, myself. <laughs> Would you like that, Coach? Why? Oh, yeah. I mean, nobody wants to know, you know, if you got ribs hurting, they'll go for your ribs, or if you got which ankles hurt, uh, they'll go for that. So Phil Sims was a great one. He never wanted anybody to know he was hurt. Don't, Coach, don't tell him what, uh, what's wrong with me. List me on the injury report, but don't tell him what's wrong with me. Great to have Coach Dan Reeves with us in the booth today and all of the years as an NFL coach in uh, New York and Denver and uh, Atlanta. Keeping an eye on a couple of Texas teams who are banging heads here. Ball is tipped on a little swing pass intended out there for Courtney Lewis. Adele Duckett once again getting a big paw up there. That's a pretty play. Tell you what, it's a good thing he made it because it's a well-designed play, and he tips it. He's got blockers out in front. He'd had some running room right there. Great play by Adele Duckett. Senior out of Mineral Wells, Texas. There, you're coming to a game, and it'll be four or five plays that'll make a difference whether you win it or lose it. And that was certainly one of them there, that was a well designed play and possibility of big yardage. Well, I think the 12th man is concerned here with third and long. McNeil biding some time, and he's not able to gain but a yard or so. And it's a two or three yard pickup. Chris Parker coming up there to undercut him and knock him down. And uh, once again, offense unable to move and a punting situation. I tell you, they're doing a great job of tackling in the open field. I mean, he gets out there and, you know, just a tremendous job of coming up and hitting. Chris Parker made a great tackle right there in the open field. I tell you, you got a guy that quick and that fast. You make a tackle on open field, you've done something. That's a great play by Parker. See Denny Anamandola down here waiting the punt from Jacob Young. Young's probably seen more punting action today than he has in some time. <laughs> this one not going real far at the 35-yard line. Anamandola trying to get some field position to midfield and into Texas A&M territory. A 16-yard return after a 34-yard punt. So still a 12-7 ball game as the time winds down here in this third quarter. 
Don't miss the 2004 MLS Cup tomorrow as Team Phenom Freddy Adu and DC United are in the championship game for a record fifth time. They'll be taking on the Kansas City Wizards, who are champions of the Western Conference. That's on ABC Sports tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Great field position again, Gary, inside A&M's territory. Both of these clubs have had opportunities. They haven't been able to capitalize. Here's Kemby being chased, and he goes for negative yardage as he's bounced right. out of bounds. Mike Montgomery again leading the charge, number 95. You talk to the coaches, they say Mike Montgomery's made uh, more improvement than anybody on his football team. Unexpectedly came in and has been a big force this year. Talk about big. Mike Montgomery talking proudly to us yesterday about his mom, Rosie Kellum, who is a uh, Hall of Fame ball player at Stephen F. Austin University. And that will do it for the end of our third quarter. We'll go to the fourth in a moment, reminding you that ABC Sports presentation of college football will be right back after a message and a word from our ABC stations. father stay with me now and killed his mother you can't tell me the courts are going to seriously consider giving michael back to him he'll stop at nothing to save him again new blue tuesday 10 9 central only on abc viewer discretion advised this mom works her fingers to the bone and that's what wives do this mom doesn't lift a finger around the house i wear the pants in the family and when these wives swap lives world you have her ball and chain to this house will real men should be outdoors not wearing aprons collide he's a lazy chauvinist pig all i hear coming out of your mouth is blah 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 blah, 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 blah. an all-new wife swap wednesday at 10 9 central shut up only on abc what do you do when you've had the best vehicle in its class for the past six years you go back to the drawing board make it more powerful yet more fuel efficient you give it enhanced safety features with run flat tires you make it more comfortable and more ingenious than ever before introducing the all-new Honda Odyssey a great idea made better Emmy winner for outstanding weather caster 13's Tim Heller Well, one of the traditions here at Texas A&M, they sing the hymn at the end of the third quarter, and the traditional swaying here amongst the ranks and all the way around the grandstand, and there are times when you can actually feel this whole thing kind of moving. You got 80,000 Red Hot fans. They've got a 12-7 lead. This is a game that's generated now. 500 yards of total offense between the two clubs, but only 19 points on the scoreboard. Here's Kemby. Completes his pass. Just got it up into the middle there for a couple of very tough yards. We talked about Sonny Kemby being the old gunslinger coming into this one today. He's had to fight off three interceptions, and certainly that's got to be frustrating. Coach, how do you deal with that? Well, he got a chance to win the football game. You know, usually that's when you got key. three interceptions, you're out of a game, but they still got a chance to win it. All right, let's see what he can do in this situation. He's got the ball now in Texas A&M territory at the 48-yard line.
He's going deep. Man-to-man -man coverage. The catch is made. Penalty marker is down. It was pulled in over there by Cody Fuller. Big, big play. Boy, you could see him just crank up, and you know he was going to let that one fly. Had single coverage on Fuller going down there. Yeah, and, and then Brock Newton had played so well. Made now so this, many plays. Let's this see if this is. I think there could be a chance that this is offensive interference, Coach, or no? Well, we're going to find out. No. Pass interference. Defense. It's on the defense. Number 20 with an arm bar. The penalty declined as the pass was caught. First and 10. Well, it couldn't be much more clear, could it? You use the old arm bar and you pay the price. Yeah, a little There's pushing a little by both, both guys, too, though. By the way, Brock Newton reacted there for a moment. He thought it was going to be called in the other direction. That's a 39-yard pickup. Well, it was definitely offensive pass interference right before the catch, but a defensive pass interference before it. Coming now inside the 10. Throws it out here to Henderson. Henderson tight rope the sideline for one score. This time he's pulled down at the one-yard line. Let's go check in with John Saunders and company in New York one more time. Wisconsin facing Michigan State and in all kinds of trouble. Drew Stanton here, 31 yards to Matt Trannon at the one-yard line. He steps across, 35-14, Spartan have the lead. Meanwhile, the Irish just lost on a 32-yard field goal, 41-38 to Pitt. Wow, Notre Dame loses by three, and Wisconsin on the verge of being knocked out of the ranks of the unbeaten by the Spartans of Michigan State trying to even their season. And here, Henderson on the ground, stretching for the goal line, but not there. Torian Henderson stopped by Mike Montgomery. Big play right there by a and You got to keep him out of the end zone. All right, let's listen to this crowd, Coach. Let's just listen to him. Third and goal. Henderson's got room. He's got the touchdown. Torian Henderson with his second score. Punches it in. Now we've got ourselves a new leader, Texas Tech, on top. 13 to 12. Remember a and went coach for that two-point conversion when they scored, and the penalty resulted then in a one-point attempt that was missed from placement, and now Texas Tech is the leader. Yeah, and they're going to go for two points right here to try to go up by three. Good zone blocking play on the last play, and uh, Henderson does a good job of getting it in the end zone. 48 yards and six plays, just under three minutes for the score. And now comes the two-point attempt. Cumbie with time, finds his man, it's Jared Hicks for the two-point conversion. A three-point lead for Texas Tech. It's 15 to 12. Well, let's take a look here at this two-point conversion. Cumbie looking to the right, then throwing to the middle. Hicks makes the grab. And with that two-point conversion off of this score by Tony and Henderson, it is Texas Tech with a three-point lead. Can inspiration replace the typical small car with something that lives a little larger? More space. More function. More sizzle. America's best small car alternative just got a little better. The Chrysler PT Cruiser, now starting at just $13,995. Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. People everywhere are experiencing a breakthrough. I'm full! Taco Bell's new Big Bell Value menu. Featuring the spicy chicken burrito with shredded chicken simmered in authentic Mexican spices. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the bun. Why do we work? Why do we get up every day and leave the people we love? At the Principal Financial Group, 
We know you work for more than just a paycheck. For 120 years, the principal has helped people keep more of the money they make and do more with the money they save. You work hard. We make work work hard for you. The Principal Financial Group. We understand what you're working for. Remember that guy who used to be called Wild Thing? The guy who wanted to spend the entire honeymoon indoors? Remember the one who couldn't resist a little mischief? Yeah, that guy. He's back. Viagra. Not all medications are for everyone. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. Whoa. This is not what smart travelers oh. do. <laughs> That's a but this is, for our lowest rates on a great car, there's just one place to go. Thrifty.com. Book smart. A wife must choose between her husband and her mother. All new According to Jim, Tuesday on ABC. Well, they figured there'd be about seven or 8,000 Texas Tech fans here today, and they've got something to get really excited about at the moment. Twelve and a half minutes to go. It's a 15-12 Tech lead over Texas A&M. Corian Henderson with a couple of scores and the two-point conversion giving him that margin, and here is the kickoff now. From the two-yard line, Jason Carter. Boy, he's not going anywhere, is he? He's down at the 11-yard line. Good tech coverage that time. Dorian Henderson with 102 total yards today and a pair of touchdowns. We've seen some great football. Interesting in this one, it's not been the high-scoring game that we thought, but it's been a nail-biter nonetheless. And coming up next Saturday, one of the greatest rivalries in college football is Michigan's dynamic freshman duel of Chad Henney and Mike Hart get their first taste to the horseshoe. They lead the Wolverines into Columbus, Ohio against Ohio State. That's at 1 Eastern next Saturday on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Of course, for the latest scores and news, search college football on ESPN.com. First down, McNeil goes to the air, out to the 27-yard line. Terrence Murphy pulling that one in. Nice way to start the series, a 16-yard pickup. Of course, everything begins to become magnified now by that clock number. You see at 12-17, we're the fourth quarter if you're just dialing by. Along with Dan Reeves and Vince Welch, I'm Gary Gerald. Watching a rivalry that is being renewed for the 63rd time, Texas Tech and Texas A&M. Great throw by Reggie to start the drive. Oh, look at him squeeze his way through there. Now he's got room to work across the 40, across midfield. Boom, out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Reggie McNeil, 25 yards, using those quick feet before Jabari Smith put the hit on him. But he comes out with a pass on the first play, and the second play he runs it, so a little the arm and the feet. And look at him squeeze through that little opening there, and then suddenly there was a lot of room to work. <laughs> Making maybe a little statement as he looked down on the uh, defender there, saying, all right, yeah, you bumped me out of bounds, but hmm, think about yeah. that. Think about that pickup. Plenty of time. Locks it out here. There's his man. It's Franks. He's open. He's down the sideline. Will he go? He reaches for the end zone. Touchdown! Gary oh. Franks. A moment of hesitation as he went diving to see if he got that ball inside the pylon. He did. The pump fits from Reggie McNeil. A 48-yard completion for the score. Well, Coach, it's a low-scoring shootout. How about that? Yeah, in the fourth quarter, this is a freshman right here. Kerry Franks catches the ball. What a great effort to get it in the end zone. Reaching for that ball over the pylon, gets it in the touchdown. So they cover 89 yards in three plays. Now we'll get the conversion attempt here. A fake. Trader fumbled it, actually, he wasn't a fake, chasing around, and he's not able to find anything going. Trader, the holder that time, unable to get it cleanly, and then trying to create something, kind of out of desperation. And boy, that's big, because uh, still a three-point game. Got a penalty marker down in the field. 
Number 81, offense. The penalties decline. Well, I tell you, you know, we talked to Boone. He hadn't had many uh, bad snaps. So it'd be interesting to see that one. But that's a big uh, extra point miss there. All right, let's uh, get ready to uh, break away here for just a moment. We've got an 18-15 ball game now after this touchdown score by the freshman out of Orange, Texas, Kerry Prince. Life is a journey. A journey with challenges. You've met them head on with the confidence of having Pacific Life by your side. For over 135 years, Pacific Life has helped millions of Americans reach their financial goals. Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Solo Mexico, her voice soars above a sweet Spanish guitar. And I got it like Dr. Pepper, originality made her a star. The taste of Dr. Pepper, the taste of originality, salutes individuality and gives life a personality. Be you, do what you do. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Inspiration make the town and country even more amazing? Yes. Will it let you travel in luxury and style? Sure. Can it find a place for everything and put everything in its place as the only minivan with stow-and-go seating and storage? Of course. The amazing new Chrysler Town and Country. 